okay. Happy wonderful Wednesday. <laughs> How you do one? I'm sure it's about your bedtime. <laughs> but I appreciate you stopping in. Hi, Riri, TikTok, Molly. Who else? Uh, Amaris or Amaris? Janice Johnson. How y'all doing? I jammed my finger yesterday. Look, it's swollen. I hit it on the dresser and it went, uh, and I go, oh no, I jammed it. So it's all, it's a little sore, but we'll see. <laughs> Hi, Lisa, Carrie, Molly. I'm looking at everybody, see if I miss anybody. Julianne, Darlene, how y'all doing? Hope everybody's doing something creative this week. Staying out of trouble. <laughs> Lisa Carey. Let's see. Pamela. Uh, <laughs> let's see. So make sure y'all have live chat selected. And make sure you have 720 or 1080p set in your little wheel. Hi, Maseki. I don't even know. I have to do my uh, Inktober. I don't even know what today is. Let's see what today's Inktober is. Mm -mm -mm. It is Sprout. Sprout. Okay. I can't believe we're already at day 20. It's going by so fast. Day 20, Sprout. <clears throat> Hi, Janet. How's it going? Jill, Donna. Uh, I'm probably missing some people, but good morning, everybody. So I got art books, paper from Top Drawer. I got coffee mugs. Hubster brought me back a Wonder Woman. <laughs> uh, uh, let's see what it says. I haven't even taken off the price tags or the little things or anything yet. So anyway, so he sent me that. He got me that. He got me some coffee mugs. He got himself. And look, he got himself this one. Let's get these tags off here. So he went to Warner Brothers. They did the Warner Brothers tour. So he got himself a director. <laughs> he got himself a whoop, uh -oh. <laughs> director. He got me a writer. <laughs> I guess maybe they didn't have artists. He got me a writer. Let me take these tags off. There we go. So he got me a writer one, him a director one. And a Wonder Woman cup and a whole bunch of other stuff. Plus, I, I broke down Janet. I know Janet, I showed this last week. Let me find it here. I got this one last uh, week before last, and I showed it last week. This uh, Stampers Anonymous. <laughs> and uh, because of Colleen or Kathy Berg, one of the other, one of the other of them enabled me on this. So, Wait for it. Wait for it, Janet. Janet's going to go, oh, my gosh. Are you looking, Janet? And I'll show them again in a little while. I got this one. <laughs> Hi, Rachel. For a while, when your husband gives you a gift with the price tags on it. Yeah. <laughs> for sure, Rachel. This one. <laughs> this one. <laughs> So I'll show them. I'll show them. <laughs> got sucked right in. Uh, uh, so did I. I got sucked right into all these. So I'll stamp them out. I'll stamp them out for you guys. So I got a couple of t-shirts here. And I got all these books and papers and things from top drawer. And then they went to the Gene Autry Museum. And, uh, of course, we collect refrigerator 
fridge, fridge, not refrigerator. <laughs> well, Janet, you know, I in between streams, hi, St thank you, Starla, for the super sticker. Thank you so much for the super sticker and, and supporting the channel. <laughs> I can't show it to you in between. I, well, I guess I could send, I could have sent you a, um, a picture yesterday, but. <laughs> uh, so thank you, Starla, so much for supporting the channel. Um, <laughs> it looks like there's a ruler on that one. I'll have to look. I don't know if there's a ruler. Uh, hi, Tina. Good morning. So they went to the Gene Autry Museum, which um, I got some pictures back from Boo. Apparently, it was really cool. A lot of Western, Native American, all kinds of cool stuff at the Gene Autry. And um, so this was some of it. Here's the lay the levels. They went. Here's all the levels. So um, yeah, it looks cool. And then here's some of the stuff that was in there. Some of the art and write-ups and some of the different artists. So, yeah, of course, you know I love this stuff that's, that I get back from it. <laughs> uh, I could have. I could, so you could have ordered it earlier, Janet. So you could have ordered it, like, right then. <laughs> Let's see. I think I saw the Molly and Maseki and beyond. Good morning. Uh, who else? I'm, I'm sure I'm missing some people, guys. I'm not trying to miss anybody. So, yeah, so I got lots of stuff to show, some magazines to go through. Now, these magazines right here, I got these at Books A Million. I got the new art journaling one that um, Di uh, Diane is in, Pack or Die is in this one. And, um, of course, I love my um, Imagine FX sketchbooks. And then I got the new Origin and, uh, you know, it's double-sided like this. So if you see it in the store, you see this one, then you see this one, you think, oh, there's two different ones. It's the same one. You just go halfway through it this way, you flip it, and you go the other way. So uh, I sometimes buy two of them. I, I didn't buy two of this one, but they're for $5.99, you get a lot of uh, cool punch out stuff and i mean you know punch cut stuff out of there's a lot of colorful things that you look see a lot of colorful stuff you could punch out with your punches and using your art journals and stuff so i got that and then uh, this the rest of the stuff is what they got me at top drawer and warner brothers and so yeah they brought me back uh, some cool stuff Let's see, who else? Uh, da, 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 da. Anybody else I'm missing? So, yeah, I'll take a sip of my juice. And I wrote myself a note at 10.30. I have to go put in the sweet potatoes because they take an hour and a half. So I want that for lunch today. So I want to get, uh, I have to get my sweet potatoes in the, so I'll have to run down and throw my sweet potatoes in the oven at 10.30. Oh, uh, let's see. What else? Um, got a couple T-shirts. We'll stamp these out. We'll do. We'll stamp these out, and um, yeah. So, hi, Kalora Becky. Happy Hump Day to you too. How you doing, <laughs> Brenda D? So yeah. Thanks everybody for stopping in. Oops, I keep clicking things here. There you go. Um, yeah, um, they had a great time. Uh, Boo, this was her first time out to L.A. So um, Hubster takes the grandkids out there, you know, intermittently. You know, Cam's been, I think, three times. This was Boo's first trip. So um, I think he's been two or three. Anyway, and this was Boo's first trip out there. And they go visit my other daughter, Annie, which y'all seen Annie and, and I show pictures of Logan you know, on his guitar and Logan on his skateboards and stuff like that. And so they go out there and visit them for like a week. And uh, now I'm, I'm going to be on a group text. I might have to take my phone out of here. Um, let's see. Yeah. Um, and, and I think, I think it was, I think it was, uh, 
I'm trying to think of who it was that sent me this before. And I have one or two of them on my desk. So um, I think it was Trisha. Trisha Green, I think, sent it, sent me this. And so now I've got more to cut up. <laughs> it's, it's wrapping paper. They're big sheets of wrapping paper. It's awesome. And uh, so Annie picked this out for me. So, um, yeah, so I got that. And look at this. This is a book of pencils you should know. It's like every pencil, like the history of the pencil. Look, it's like the history of the pencil. Every pencil. And it's put out by Chronicle Books. I've never seen this before. Of course, any Chronicle book is a good book. I'm just saying I've never met a bad Chronicle book. If it's published by Chronicle, it's going to be good. I can't tell you how many Chronicle books I have. And they're all amazing, amazing, excellent books. So I'll go through that and some, uh, just some punch outs. Here's the top drawer catalog. This is where they got the, the uh, stationary stuff. And uh, so I'll go through everything here in a minute. I like to say good morning to everybody talk to everybody for a minute it is a chat show don't email me it's a chat show you can slide you can just slide on by if you're watching the recording don't email me <laughs> i love i love my mandalorian on there i just stuck that on there i love that mandalorian um let's see who else um yeah chronicle books uh where they published out of chronicle books i'm not sure where chronicle books is located yeah san francisco yeah san francisco yes and beyond oh uh, reading reading trying to catch up so um yeah i closed the doors the cats they've been so they've been all like all needy since hubster got back i mean like all around the circling 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 like wanting that uh, uh, undivided their undivided attention <laughs> i guess they missed him i guess they missed him so uh let's see just like the... <laughs> yeah uh yeah i can't like I know you're, I know you're just being funny. Your hand hurts from saying hi, but I really, I did. I jammed my finger into the dresser. Like I was walking by and I don't know why I just caught it. Just and see how swollen it is. This is from another incident there, but my finger's swollen from, from jamming it. And it really hurts. Look, see how, look how swollen it is. <laughs> so uh, anyway, I put some ice on it last night. Let's see, Linda Patrick, Kathy McConnell, who else am I missing? Kimberly, 557. Uh, Kelly S. Um, who else? I think I've said hi to everybody I've seen. So I guess we'll get started. I'll show you everything. Hi, Debbie Bruce. Tina. Yeah, I, cracked, yeah, yeah, I did. I cracked it. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay it's just a little um it's just a little uh it's just a little swollen it just hurts a little but it's not bad it's okay what i'll tell you what hurts have you ever accidentally kicked a door and broke a toe <laughs> i've done it twice i have done it twice i have kicked a door jam or you know like the door wasn't anyway you know the the door itself I've kicked the door and uh, I've broke an, uh, I've broke two toes before, not a, in two separate times. That hurts. I'll tell you, a broke a toe really hurts. Little toe, middle toe, any toe, <laughs> and can't do anything about it. You know, you can't you can't uh, put a cast on a broke toe. <laughs> I guess you could, but they don't. So anyway, you have Donna. Yeah, it hurts. So, okay. So let me go ahead and get crack a lack and show you everything I got here. I showed you my uh, <coughs> cups. Hubster got, you got me this one and they're nice and big. See, I like big mugs. I like, you know, when I'm going to have a cup of coffee, I want a cup of coffee. So I got that. 
And then um, this, he got himself this one and got me the writer and him the director. Cups from Warner Brothers when they went on the tour. And I think I showed y'all a couple of um, pictures from that last week when they were out there. I showed you some pictures of them during the tour. And um, then got me a couple of t-shirts. Got me this one. And uh, got me this one, Los Angeles. And they're re I like them big because I wear my uh, leggings and I like them long. So I said, get get thin. I like thin shirts. And I said, and get them big, really big so they're long. Because I like long, long shirts. And uh, so he knows, you know, don't get me any sweatpants, sweatshirts. I won't wear them. Get me thin shirts. So... Um, that's that's what he does. Get some thin. You got me this one. So, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> and they're thin, thin, thin. So he got me two shirts and those coffee mugs. And what else do we got over here? And I showed you they went to the Autry, Gene Autry Museum. Got me another magnet. They also went to the Ronald Reagan Museum. And I got a bunch of stuff, you know, magnets and stuff from there. But uh, he always takes the kids out to the to there. And I showed you the picture they were at. Uh, they were standing in Air Force One, so they got a picture of standing in Air Force One. And then I'll show these um, these magazines here in a minute. We'll go through them because this will be the art time here. We'll go through these magazines, and uh, this is the one Packer dies in. She's been in quite a few. She's been in quite a few art journaling magazines. Let me get over to her section. Let's see what page she's on. Uh, so here's her section. Don't follow Packer die. Uh, I don't think she goes by Pack or Die now. I think she just goes by... I'm not sure what she goes by now. Her, I mean, her YouTube and her face, I mean, her uh, Instagram name. It used to be Pack or Die. You might still be able to find her by Pack or Die. So there's a, she's got her, here's her article here. She's got three pages, I think. Three, yeah, three. So we'll go through the art journaling, the origin, which I buy these. So, I mean, they have some cute little articles and stuff too. And they are double-sided like that. So make sure you don't get, think you're getting two different magazines when you buy that. Um, but like the little things that you can punch out like these, look, you can take out your punch and punch this out. Or you can just cut it out, squares, triangles, whatever shape you want. But maybe we'll cut out some of this and, and just put it on an art journal. So got that. And then I got the new Imagine FX sketchbooks. And it had a it was kind of bent up, but um I had to get it anyway. <laughs> so again, I gotta kind of watch the um, you know, because there's a little bit of nudity in these sometimes, but the, the artwork is just amazing. What it is, it's sketchbooks. They're actual photographs out of sketchbooks um, of artists. And um, so, yeah, we'll kind of look at that. All right. So let me go through my gifties um, or prezies, as I say in the UK. <laughs> Let's go through my prezies. <laughs> Hi, Lori Painty Girl, sis, little sister Cheryl, Amira or Amira. Uh, I'm sure I'm probably missing some people. I try to say good morning to everybody because that's the way we roll around here. <laughs> Brent, I said hi to Brenda D. Uh, that's really long. Okay, so he got me a Warner Brothers, um, what do you call it, a uh, journal. And, uh, of course, I probably won't use this for journaling. I might do some kind, maybe I'll do some kind of Hollywood movie star collage stuff in this and give it back to him. Because I already have books that I journal in, and this is a lined one. 
notes and memos, but I'm probably not, I won't use this as a journal journal because I have other things that I use for journals, travelers and stuff. So, um, but I might collage, I might make this a Hollywood book for him. He'd probably think that was cool if he's watching. Just pretend you didn't hear that, Hubster, if you're watching. <laughs> Sometimes he pops in. Uh, so anyway, uh, got me that. I'm going to make me a pile over here. Um, then, um, all right, let's go ahead and show the kimono paper. And these you can get on Amazon. They're from Pepin Press, P-E-P-I-N Press, Pepin Press, and there's all different kinds of these, and I have a few different ones, and uh, Annie picked this one out for me. She didn't know I had this one, but that doesn't matter because, you know, I still use them. I have them on my, well, right now I have my desk, uh, I have a board on my desk, but look, there's one of them right there, see, there's one of them. So I like having this because I can move it around and it's got that. And hopefully, Janet, you'll get your mail today so that and there's some of this in there for you to put down on your uh, desk. So it's really it's really nice. It's it's that wallpaper. You can get it off of Amazon and it's a, a peelable. It's, um, you know, it's like a giant sticker. It's a peelable wallpaper and it's got just enough of a shine that it doesn't glare but it's wipeable, okay? Oh, you think so, Becky? Okay. Hi, Julie O, um, Terry Lynn. And so I think that um, um, you should get your, hopefully get your mail, you know, soon, Janet. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope it does, Rachel. I hope it does. All right. So let's go ahead and I'll show you these. And they pull out. And again, you can get these on Amazon. He got, uh, Annie picked this out for me at uh, Top Drawer, the, the store Top Drawer. Um, tools for Nomads. And uh, this is their catalog. And uh, they're out, based out of Massachusetts. I don't know how many stores they have nationwide. I don't know. But they have one in L.A. And that's where they went. <laughs> and um, <laughs> so, and they're just stunning paper. So I'll pull one out to show you. Because I'm going to use them. They are perforated. They think they're perforated. Yeah, it is. I'm just going to get it started. There we go. Okay. And they're really big. They're, they're wrapping they're made as wrapping papers see so what i like to do is put them on my desk every now and then and use them as a backdrop and swat switch them out every now and then but look how pretty see we just got to sit here and, and look at it for a minute <laughs> they're stunning they're stunning and then you can use them in your collage your art journals your whatever you know your junk journals they're just so pretty. And they have tons of different styles. So let me fold it back up. It's like a map here. And I'll flip through and let you see the different ones. And uh, so they're just so pretty. I know, Brenda, right? And they they're, they're feel like wrapping paper. I mean, you know, they're, they're kind of thin, which is good if you're collaging. And then this one is kind of a matte. It's a little on a different kind of paper. So these ones are shiny that I just flipped through. This one, the next couple are a matte. So there's there they feel totally different. Okay. They feel totally different. <clears throat> Same for this one. But they're just so beautiful. Just so beautiful. I don't know if they're based off of kimono uh, pattern, fabric patterns or or not, but they're beautiful. Right, Debbie? I know. Oh, don't you want to get that? Just want to say, oh, thanks, Tina. Thanks for stopping in. Y'all, you have, yeah, stay. I hope you are healthy, Miss Tina. Okay. Have a, have a good day. Tina just stopped in to say good morning. That's so sweet. Thank you, Tina. 
so I think there's 12. Is there 12 different ones? Yeah, 12. 12 different sheets. And uh, this one is ISBN is 9789460091100. And it's Pepin Press. I think they're out of the UK, I think. I think they're out of the UK. Pepin. I mean, they have every language here, but uh, let's see here. Uh, Amsterdam. They're out of the Netherlands. So they're out of the Netherlands. Pepin Press. And again, there's they have beautiful papers at, over there. All right, next. Let's see. Let's put that right over here. Make my pile. So let's go ahead and look at the top drawer. Um, let's look at the top drawer catalog. Not sponsored. Just, <laughs> we just love it. We just love our paper stores. Um, so, uh, yeah. So this one, and I'm not sure which store this is. If this is the one um, out of Massachusetts or just, oh, this one's in Berkeley. This one's in California. This may have been the one they went to. So, uh, yeah, I'll just flip it real quick. Bags, different keychains, day packs. These look so cool. If I, if I was uh, out and about, <laughs> then those would be very cool. Look at the red one and the yellow one. Those are so cool. And then here are, um, what do you call it? Uh, uh, food, you know, the food containers. <clears throat> Let's see. Hit the road. Tr tumblers and just different different things for traveling, to going out out on the road. Handkerchiefs, glasses. Tech accessories and different. I think this is their different. All right. So they have one, two, three, four, five, six in California, two in Massachusetts, two in Illinois. Uh, Tokyo has three. So, yeah. Very cool. Fountain pens, Janet. Janet loves her fountain pens. Fountain pens. <laughs> and I guess this is a like for your nib holder. Is this like for nib holder? Not sure. Just thought I'd give y'all a little flip. The different papers. Oh my gosh, look, the old camp, the old Polaroids. You can get these still. I used to have one. I think this was the one I used to have. Now you can. Now you have to buy them for three hundred and fifty dollars. Of course, you know what? It, you know what's going to happen is the film. The film is probably what gets you on the prize, right? Uh, some different journals, photo albums, slippers. They look so com comfortable and fuzzy. Uh, more journals, more handkerchiefs. Look at the designs on them, though, like little kimono designs. Look at that. Uh, let's see what just this is just random stuff here that they have. But look, does, don't you just want to go just spend the day just right in this store? That's like when uh, Cam and I went to Paper Source week before last. Oh, my gosh. We could have spent all day in Paper Source. And we had like 10 minutes because we were meeting everybody for lunch and everything. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 10 minutes in Paper Source. And then look, is this an old transistor radio? What is this? Fountain pen. Not sure. It looks like it looks like the an old, you know, AM FM, maybe just AM. Well, probably now it'd have to be FM too. So that's the top drawer catalog. And um, so let's see what else we got here. 
got the label stickers and tapes, Japan style. And it's a Pepin. It's a Pepin as well. And um, she got it, they got this stuff at top drawer. But uh, it's a Pepin out of Amsterdam. And this one, the um, ISBN on this is 9789460094217. So top drawer or Amazon sales. I got to get the light there. And uh, <clears throat> so it has paper, stickers. These are little stickers. Stickers. And washi. So these are individual little strips of washi. Isn't that so pretty? Look at those. <gasps> Just love them. There's washies, more washies, <laughs> more washies. Hi, Leona. Anybody else? Nanamo. I'm sure I'm missing. Look at all these washies. I know. They're j and they're just like, just enough to do one, you know, one journal spread, you know. And then here's more round stickers. Bigger round stickers. I think I missed a page there. Then the bigger round stickers. I know. I mean, I just, you just want to just stare at them. I do anyway. <laughs> and then these papers. I think these papers may be a sticker too. I think they are. Let's flip. Yeah. The, these sheets are stickers as well. Full on. Oh, no, they're squares. Look at that. There's little squares. But they all flow together. Oh, no, wait, this one and this one. They have, that has like sections. But these are stickers, too. Everything's a sticker in this book. This one, they're little squares. Or rectangles, I should say. Sticker shock. <laughs> and then here's some more washi tapes. I don't know if these are the same. Let's go back to the first sheet. I think they're du I think I'm duplicating now. Let's go back to this. I think there might be two of each. Yeah. So now there's they're the same. These these are there's like two of each sheet. Because this is the same ones that were in the front. So two of each one. And then the squares as well, rectangles. So label, stickers, and tapes. I know, right? I don't know how much these are. This one ran. Uh, it came out in 2018. It's got this flap on it like this. There's a little... So it kind of folds into a little booklet. But, uh, yeah. So, there's that one. Then... Um, these postcards. Japanese design postcard coloring book. 20 watercolor cards so let's see what if they mean watercolor paper yeah they're on uh they're like on a, a hot press hot press watercolor paper and they're postcards and again it's pepin so it's uh watercolor postcards that you can watch you you know do the watercolor or just send them you could just send them and then let them let the person that got them do um do the watercolor <laughs> janet <laughs> <laughs> Sister. Uh, so I don't know they're kind of hard to see they're very faint which is good if you're going to watercolor right
There's a crawfish, <laughs> a koi. And then there it has, does it have an information on the back? Yeah, it does. It does have the information on the back. Some of these might have been originally like fish, the prints. Have you ever seen the Japanese do the fish printing where they take a real fish and they ink it up and they put the paper on it and make a fish print? Very, very cool. Very cool. So, yeah. So, that's uh, Japanese Designs 20 Watercolor Cards. And, again, it's by Pepin. The little, see the little rabbit there? And um, the ISBN on this, 9 seven eight nine four six zero zero nine six zero six eight so yeah okay next Annie picked this stuff out she picked she picked out the uh, stuff at uh, at uh, top drawer <laughs> Uh, those fish can ink together. <laughs> I don't think they're alive, Rachel, when they're inking them. I don't think they ink them and return them to the wild. <laughs> so this is a watercolor, large landscape, and it is by um, Handbook Journal. Handbook Journal Co. Company. So, yeah. And it is, what is the size of this? Does it have it on here? Five and a half by eight and a half. And it's a landscape. But with, when I use these kind of things, I never use the landscape. I always use them this way. Oh, thank you, Nasser, for the $2 super chat. <laughs> Come in and advertise your book, Nasser. <laughs> Gosh. Oh my gosh, Nasser, you're something. So if y'all don't know Nasser, he's a writer. I've, I've shown his books before. He's a writer. How many books have you written this year, Nasser? And then he uh, writes uh, horror uh, comics. And um, Jason has il illustrated this. The last one, I think, his newest one. Well, maybe not. I don't know who did Creepsters. Is Creepsters? It's a book. Is it a book or a comic book, Nasser? Creepster? Um, he's Yeah, he's written a lot. How many? How many books have you written, Nasser, this year? Seriously. Or let me ask you this. How many do you have on Amazon, Nasser? You come in, promote yourself now. Oh, it is. Creepster is a comic? Okay. Um, how many books have you written that are on Amazon right now, Nasser? Don't be shy. <laughs> you super chatted $2. Let's do it now. <laughs> 10 on Amazon, but how many have you written? I know you've written way more than that. 100? Have you written 100 books this year? I'm serious, guys. He's He writes, he's like, writes, writes, writes. And, um, yeah, you can follow him on uh, Twitter. <laughs> such, a, such a character. Hi, Rachel. Oh, so hi, Rachel. Um, let's see. Who else am I missing? I know I'm probably missing people coming in. Okay, so thank you for the super chat, Nasser. If you want to tell us how many books you've written this year, feel free. <laughs> okay, so it's a watercolor, and uh, I'm going to take off the sleeve here. And it feels, you know, it's got that uh, linen texture to it, and it's got the strap. It kind of, it's kind of like, um, what do you call it, who, who, um, Arteza? Some people say Arteza, some say Arteza, but it has that feel and has that same kind of um, elastic. I've done a lot of rewriting and editing this year. I have four haunted house novels I want to put out next year. That doesn't answer my question. How many books have you written all total? Let's put it that way. Do you know? Do you know how many books you've written all total? Oh, thank you, Janet. There we go. Janet just put a link to Nasser's library in Indiegogo. So if you want to uh, support his horror um, comics and books, there he's, he writes creepy stuff, not going to lie. Creepy stuff. I've shown some of his books I bought off of Amazon. Yeah, look, that goes. <laughs> Fess up, Nasser, Rachel said. So, um, yeah, so it's thick, probably 140 weight, 140 weight um, hot press paper oh let's do a little asmr so 
very cottony feeling. Very cottony feeling. So we'll have to test this out. Jan, have you ever used one? This was put out by Speedball. Distributed by Speedball. Handbook Journal Co. Distributed by Speedball. Okay. There we go. Okay. All right. But you stay busy and you stay productive. And he's only, what, how old are you? 23, Nasser? I think he's only like 22, 23 years old. And written 35 books. Novels. Written 35 novels and I don't know how many comic books. Um, and he's only like 22, 23 years old. Yeah, that's like, uh, <laughs> when I saw that girl, and I'll never forget this as long as I live. The girl, um, and I just came across it because I like that, um, you know, modern swing dance. And uh, so I'll come across every now and then in the sidebar something, a, a, a modern swing dance. And there was this girl, and she started out, she wanted to lose some weight. And this was like, now it's been a couple years now. And so she said she's going to do this, some swing dancing. Oh, you just turned 24. Well, happy birthday, Nasser. And um, so she uh, she started doing swing dancing and uh, filming herself on YouTube. I don't. I wish I could remember her name. I could probably find it if I look. But um, so she uh, she filmed, you know, maybe one a week or something like that, doing her swing dance and her weight loss. Well, after a year. She lost a lot of weight and she was really good at swing dance. And there was a comment. I will, the, the comment was the best. And I, I commented back to the commenter. I said, that is the best comment I've ever seen on YouTube. <laughs> and they said, oh my gosh, I wasted a whole pandemic. <laughs> I'll never forget that comment. It was hilarious. So anyway, I'm saying that to say, Nasser's 24 years old, has written 35 novels and other, all kinds of other writing. And uh, so, yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, let's see. Hey, Annie Mame. Um, so, yeah. So there's this little uh, handbook journal co. I've, and, I've, and I have seen these on Amazon as well. And uh, this is the watercolor one. So just FYI. Don't y'all think that's funny? I thought that was hilarious. All right. So then last, as far as what I got from Top Drawer from um, Los Angeles, from the family. Bye, Nasser. Thanks for the $2. <laughs> it's so funny. And, um, okay. So, and this is Pencils You Should Know. And again, it's put out by Chronicle Books. And anything Chronicle Books is awesome. I've got tons of Chronicle Books. And I love them all. And uh, so this is a history of the ultimate writing utensil, um, 75 different pencils. And uh, so, yeah, it, I'm going to just flip and, you know, they're, and they're, they go back from vintage. I think they start, all right, so here, like this one, lead pencils, 1830s. So I think they do go in chronological order. Um I did flip through it, but I think they do go in chronological order. Here's 1881. Let's see here. And it's just graphite pencils. Hi, Mark Wood. Let's see. Did I say, yeah, I said hi to Darlene. Um, okay, so here is 1940s. HB pencil. And I mean, you know, oh, let me just zoom in. It's easier. There we go. <clears throat> and it's just so cool. Late 1800s. Crayon 66626 pencils. Faber, oh, er, Eberhard Faber. I don't know that, did that turn into Faber Castell? Uh, I'll have to read it. They have a little information about each one, right? Colinor. Ticonderoga. I love Ticonderoga, the black ones. And then also, and then Blackwing is in here too. Now, Blackwing has, I think they have five different, five different Blackwings. This is the Blackwing mat. And uh, I got these, uh, Annie sent me the, some of the, a box of these. So the Ticonderoga. So I don't know. It makes me want to start collecting pencils, but I don't want to. Yeah, I, I don't have time for it. But I would. I would probably love to collect pencils. Look, the pencil box. So just different ones. 
Is it a cool bow? Ah, oh, look. 1930s. 1910. This is an eagle. I mean, I don't know if that's the same eagle that does the, uh, did the uh, barrel, you know, the, the, that before they were Prismacolor, they were Sanford, then they were barrel, then they were eagle. Probably. Different boxes. Isn't that cool though, guys? And then they have the write-up about each one. So I will be reading this book. Some other Ticonderogas. Calculator. IBM. Blackwing. See here. This is the Blackwing 602. They have those flat erasers, see? They're flattened out. Which is, it does prevent them from rolling. I think that was the original intent, was to keep them from, they don't roll on a desk. Um, well, that's Tracy. <laughs> You'd probably call that the, co the color pencils, that I have a lot of different color pencil brands. But uh, I don't really collect these, you know, vintage pencils. Um, the vent, the book is almost the same thing as what, Janet? I missed something. Let me scroll back. I must have missed something you said because the book is the same, almost the same thing as what? Um, there's another black wing. This one has the pink eraser. Just so cool to look at all the different ones. Chronicle Books was started by San Francisco Chronicle newspaper. Oh, okay, Linda Patrick. I love Chronicle books. Don't know about the San Francisco Chronicle newspaper, but the books are awesome. Oh, same as collecting all the pencils. To have the pictures here, you mean? This is just as good, you mean, as having the pencils? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I do have a lot of pencils, but not vintage ones. I've never tried to collect vintage pencils. So... But isn't it cool? I mean, there's just so many. I didn't know there were so many different types of number two pencils. There's a Black Warrior. And the little pencil boxes. I think I'd rather collect the pencil boxes than the pencils because they are you know because of the graphics on them and stuff but isn't that cool very cool book all right so i'm not going to go through the whole thing i'll just kind of do a little flip there's just so many so there's 75 75 uh different ones and there's a few japanese ones and uh yeah so pencils you should know and it's just a, the way, it looks like a little pencil box, right? It's just it's very nice little compact little book. All right. The ISBN is 978-1-4521-78370. So pencils you should know, a history. Okay. So here's that. All right. I didn't have the boxes too. Yeah, yeah, Janet. All right, so let me show you the magazines. I know I just bought these at, let me back up. Uh, got these at Books a Million. <clears throat> and just give you a little flip of this. All right, Rachel, I'm going to straighten up my desk here. Let's see, I think I need to tw twist the camera just a little. There we go. It got a little. I think the camera is what was kind of crooked, not my board. There we go. <laughs> So, and I did put my, make myself a note, put my sweet potatoes in at 1030. And then we're going to stamp out, I showed this one last week, and Janet promptly bought it, but she likes lettering and fonts and text as well. So I blamed uh, Kathy Berg and um, 
Colleen, Scrap Chick Colleen for buying this. But I, and I'm not sure. I don't know that this one's new or these other ones I got. But when I got this one that I started looking, <laughs> I started looking. So then I got this one. And I'll go through them. We'll stamp them out. I've stamped a couple of them to test them. This one. This one. Great backgrounds. Great background stamps. And they're the red rubber. They're the red rubber, which is good. And I love this one. I've stamped. I think I stamped both. Yeah, stamped. Say I used it already. I love these two. This is like a downward view of a typewriter. You know, I think it goes, does it go this way? Yeah, it goes this way. It's a down, it's a down view of a typewriter, which I love that. And then this one is, looks just like a clock, um, schematic of a clock. If you cut it open, you know, and then there's the side view. If you were sitting at laying it on its side, <clears throat> which goes this way. We we'll go that like that's the face right there. So we'll stamp those out here in a minute. <laughs> I hope she's okay. I haven't seen her today. I haven't seen Pacola today. I hope she's okay. Anytime you know when Julie too. I haven't seen Julie this morning. So you got you're on your toes. You're but you're by yourself. Tina had to go with Doctor Janet. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Janet. <laughs> I'll have to send you a watercolor postcard. I hope you get your mail today. I didn't track it this morning. But Hubster and Annie packed up my cups, packed up my cups and um, the T-shirts and a couple other things, packed them up and mailed them, you know, in a priority box, just like I sent yours in a priority box. They mailed them on, let's see, they got back on Monday. So they mailed them Saturday. So they mailed them Saturday and I got them, did I get them Monday? I think I got them, I got these back in on Monday at night, maybe Tuesday at the latest. And I mailed Janet's box a week ago. <laughs> she still hasn't got it. It seems like it always takes so long to get to you, Janet. I don't know why. I binge bought a bunch of Tim's Blueprint stamps. You did? You bought some of these? Uh, these, yeah, I got some of the little blueprint ones uh, years ago. They're in one of my boxes. I, I'll pull out some of my stamps. We'll do some stamping today to use up the rest of the time today. We'll do stamping. How about that? Um, I was going to do a color book page, but I don't want to rush, you know, and we're already an hour in and I wanted to show all my um, stuff that I got from um, Hubster and Nene, Annie. Uh, let's see. Okay, let's keep rolling. All right. So the origins. All right. So what I like to do with this is, um, and you can cut them too. I'll do a couple different things. So I like to punch. And cut. Now I need some kind of a. Here's my top drawer. Uh, everything can. Everything they wrap it all up with um, uh, tissue paper and put on their top drawer sticker. So um, I'll just use this as a blank white, you know, piece of paper here to show you what I like to do with these. Hi, Linda Rins. Anybody else I missed coming in? Barb. All right, so. Like, all right, well, let me kind of do a little flip first. So again, it's a, it's a half, half the magazine goes this way. Oh, sorry, I got the hiccups, my juice. And then the, um, the other half goes this way. So when you go to the store to buy this, if you see this and you see this, don't think it's two different magazines. The Origin, and then there's a couple of the other ones too. I can't remember their names right off the bat. Maybe they're listed in here. But uh, they uh, they have some different publications. Uh, Thrive, Mantra Wellness, or that could be Mantra, um, and Origin. 
those three. And there's other ones that are published by other people too, but those are the three put out by Origin Magazine. And they're just so yummy for colors and everything. Let's get the light back there. I might have to adjust the lighting. But there's just so much good collage fodder and art journaling fodder, right? So I'm going to kind of flip kind of quick. Recipes, home decor, food. And then they have articles um, in, in it, you know, relaxation, chilling. <laughs> I have a lot of that. And um, so, and lots of patterns, right? Lots of patterns. So, like, look at these. So, let's just do this. I'm just making sure I'm not cutting up an article I want to read. Because uh, I do like to browse the articles. Okay, so you got this. And let's see if I can do the yay. It's not going to quite fit. I can't fit it on here with this. So, what I'll do with this one is cut this down. Cut this out like this. So you can punch, pun, use your punch, and then same thing for the patterns here. Let's do like this one here. And they just make good little decorations in your art journals. Or you could do things like, let's find a different one here, like this one. This will be a good one for triangles. <clears throat> okay, so let me just do this. And they're just so cool to put in your journal. You can do so many different things with the different shapes, you know. Let's alternate with an orange one here. Let's do this one. This one. There's just so many cool things you can do. Here's your why. Did I miss a why? Or maybe you're not talking to me, Janet. <laughs> I mean, you can just do, let's move these, let's do this. So, yeah, they just make such cool, miss the name of this one, little sister, Origin. Mindfulness, Home, Wellness. And it's the same magazine as this one. You just flip it and half the magazine goes one way, half goes the other. But it's, they just have such cool little patterns and things like this that you can use in your journaling. I mean, I think so. Anyway. All right, so let's continue on. And look at this. I love this. <laughs> look, <laughs> while you were busy foraging, I studied the blade. <laughs> oh my gosh. And these have such cute little look, support your local street cats. <laughs> Raccoon, skunk, possum. I don't know. It's just that was, I thought these were funny, and uh, but you know anything like this? No, I don't want to cut that because I like that side. But you can punch these out or cut them out and use them for different, uh, you know, shapes. Metabolism. <laughs> there you go, Janet. <laughs> You're welcome, little sister. <laughs> Janet. <laughs> Uh, 
So now it's going upside down. So I have to turn the magazine over and now it's from this side. So I'm just going to keep flipping though. Just so I just want y'all to get the idea of how many cool things are in here. Patterns, color combinations. It just makes you happy. Look, how can you not be happy looking at just this page? Just the colors, right? Just makes you happy. But look at the color combinations. Like here's black, uh, red, and like a olive green, you know, pink, yellow, and or orange. Um, so it's just really cool combination, color combinations and patterns, right? Hi, Devin. You'll have to go back and see all my uh, haul from Los Angeles. So, yeah. So, like I said, they do have some good, you know, articles here and there. And then they have little notes, you know, little notes by the artists that they're featuring. But, uh, yeah, I just love, I just love all the, and look, this one's already got us, it's already in a circle. So, that's Origin. And again, don't buy the same one. I mean, you can buy two because there's plenty enough to do both sides. But it is the same magazine. All right. Then. Um, I did get another book. I got this book. I don't think I showed this last week. Maybe I'll show this one too. I don't think I'll go through it because it does have some, you know, uh, non-PG stuff in it. But I'll just show you the cover. All right, then we got the art journaling magazine that Packer Die is in, which I showed you a minute ago. Let me go back to her section here. And uh, here's an article by her with her art. And uh, yeah, so you need to, you know, if you like the, if you like the magazine, and here's a, another reason to get it because Packer Die's article is in it. And I'm just going to do a quick little flip. And uh, Art Journaling is the same people that put out Somerset Studio. And uh, they still have quite a few magazines. They don't have as many as they used to. But they have Somerset Studio, Art Quilting, Green Craft, Bella Grace, In Her Studio, Mingle, Willow and Sage, The Candle Issue, Holiday, Jewelry. And then they have different ones that have come out over the, like here's Somerset Place. They have special publications. They have the Art Dolls. They have um, they have different magazines that come out and have come out. This was one of their first. Well, you look the book that started it all, the True Colors, the True Colors book. You can still get a re repop of that. Um, so anyway, um, yeah. But I don't buy every one anymore. The Art Journal or the Somerset Studio. I flip through them and see if there's something new or because you know I you gotta remember I've been collecting Somerset Studios. I think the first one was 1990. Two, and I still have some of those. I have stacks of uh, Somerset Studio, some of the old ones I've still kept um, intact. But um, you know, when you when you've collected a magazine for twenty five years, it's like you got to have something really different to you know attract my attention. And pack or die in the in the in the issue will do that. So I do flip through them and don't buy every issue any longer. But I used to. I used to buy every Somerset Studio, every art journaling, and, and the different publications that they put out. So I'm not going to flip through. Um, but, oh, let me tell you this. One of the nice things about art journaling is, well, look, 200 plus journaling pages. But they have little tips and questions. Like here's a tip from this artist uh, about following artists on social media Here's the question we ask the artist. When you're pressed for time, what is your favorite way to lay down a quick background? And then each of the artists that are featured, including Packer Die, um, answer that question. And they have three or four of those kind of questions throughout the magazine. And uh, so it's just uh, with little, look, here's another question. How often do you usually work in your art journal? Do you schedule time? And each of the artists answered that question. So it's, if you're a, just, especially if it, you're a newbie to art journaling, I can't recommend this book enough or these books, these magazines. I can't recommend them enough if you're a newbie to art journaling. Uh, well, even if you're not, but you know, like I said, when you've had, when you've been buying them for 25 years, it's like, you know, um, 
it has to be something really new for me to buy them anymore. Techniques to try, different techniques. All these are little techniques by the different artists. So there's just, and then again, there's Packer Dye's article. So um, yeah, so that's the newest art journaling magazine put out by what well, I think the the publishing company is called Stampington. Um, but they put they put out Somerset Studio, which is the one most people are familiar with. All right, let's see. Let me check chat here. Anything going on? Nats. Uh, I said hi to Devin. Okay, well, I don't need this tissue anymore. All right, then um, I get I I buy these as often as I can, but make sure that when you buy them, you're not buying a repeat. Uh, check the dates and stuff because I've I've bought them. They've changed the covers and I've bought different ones twice over a two year period. Uh, or maybe it's just a year, but it seems like it was longer. But anyway, but I love the F Imagine FX sketchbooks. They're like my favorite. Uh, you do pay a book price for them. Um, they are $29.99. So you're paying a book price. So just pretend it's in a hardback because, but to me, it's so worth it. Uh, when you have so many different artists and showing their sketchbooks, it's, it's to me, it's like it, buy, a, buy the book, right? But there is some nudity in it. So I'm going to try to kind of be careful with that because, uh, you know, we try to keep this PG, but, um, so there's just all different kinds of fantasy and sci-fi and creatures and and then and they're broken out by uh, the different artists. I think they're alphabetical as well, and uh, it's it's pictures from their sketchbooks, and you just get so much inspiration, so much inspiration from them all. I just love, I just love this magazine. Well, I call it a book because it's, you know. Janet didn't get her iced coffee today. What are you talking about, Devin? Yeah, that's true, Nats. They, they, uh, the uh, Somerset Magazine and the Art Journal. Well, they're not as expensive as like this. I think they're 14, let me see, they're 14 .99. Yeah, they're 14 .99. This and the summer, I think the Somerset, Somerset might be a little cheaper. It might be a little cheaper. <clears throat> but Imagine FX are not cheap. And they also, how I showed you, I've got a comic book one. They have fantasy ones. They have digi art, lots of digi art. Um, but these are the sketchbooks of um, different artists. And again, they're put in alphabetical order. This is by someone named Moon. And uh, it, they're just, I love them. I, I, I just could just sit and just look and look and look and look and look at them because they're just so inspirational. <clears throat> right? Hi, Karen. Okay, Janet. So, of course, I got my coffee. Okay, well, someone said something. I was just, you know, making sure. Robert, Robert, where are you? <laughs> you okay, Robert? <laughs> so, yeah. So, lots of creatures and and character development and scenes and world building. So oh, it's just all amazing. See, this is what inspires me, this kind of stuff. I just could just stare and, and study it and study it over and over again. So Imagine FX Sketchbooks. This one is... Volume volume four. This is volume four. I, I don't know how many. I think, do they put four out a year? I'm not sure. But this one's volume four. All right. Then, and I'm not going to flip through this much. I'll just kind of quickly show you this. I got this off Amazon. It's brand new. It's Kevin Smith's Secret Stash, The Definitive Visual History. And uh, so I'm not going to get into it. It's not, you know, this is not, you know, a kid-friendly book <laughs> but um and it does have lots of different inserts and uh tip-ins and it's the whole history of kevin smith his life his career and um movies and everything so uh, i'll just leave it at that 
So it's a big, heavy art. It's a coffee table art book. All right. So let's see. What else? Um, show my T-shirts. Oh, okay. So I guess we'll do, we'll do some stamping. We'll stamp. I need to get a big sheet of paper or something out. I gotta watch the clock, 10:30. I have to remember to put in my um oh I did get one other thing. Now, these are on clearance at Books a Million. And um I got these to cut up, but they also have such good information. I don't know if I I have to read them first. And I think there are nine of them, and I got six of them. And they're bargain priced at $3.97. Plus, I have my uh, discount. Uh, at Books A Million, but they're Nat Geo Kids. They were in the clearance section. They were $3.97, and also when you buy clearance books, they always mark the bottom so they know, although I guess they forgot to mark that one, uh, so you can't take them back and get like a full refund or something. They want you, <laughs> they want to make sure, oh, it's on clearance. It's got the red mark on the bottom, which doesn't bother me. Um, but what I loved about these weird, but true, they have so much information, not just great pictures, but they have great little, little, look, freshwater snails kill more humans every year than lions, wolves, crocodiles, and sharks combined. Would you have never known that? And how is that? How does that happen? I don't know. I don't really want to look it up, but I'm just saying there's just all kind of weird, but true. And this one's number nine, eight, six four three two and one so yeah so i think there's nine all total but the, the pictures i love the the saying you know the uh, info um a new species of tropical ant was recently discovered in a frog's belly i i mean just can you imagine you could do i could write a whole zine on that make janet could for sure that could be in her newspaper in Janet's newspaper zine, which I love Janet's. If y'all haven't seen, should I pull some of Janet's zines out? <laughs> she could do a whole zine on a, trop a new species of tropical ant discovered in a frog's belly. Or Lena could too. I'm telling you, Lena can make a whole story. But anyway, um, here's an artist created the world's largest biodegradable portrait on a grassy slope in Switzerland. Look at that. I mean, I don't know if you can see... Look, these are houses down there. Those are houses down there. <laughs> so I don't know how big this is. But I just loved this. I love this kind of stuff. I love the pictures, the fonts, the graphics. I love everything about these little books. And so for less than four bucks each, I could not pass them up. But I mean, look. Right? Bye, Donna. Look, Scotland's national animal is a unicorn. Did y'all know that? Well, if you're in, from Scotland, you <laughs> So So now we know about where Zippy comes from. Zippy must be Scottish. <laughs> Zippy, if you're lurking. Um, yeah, are you from Scotland, Zippy? <laughs> But anyway, so these books are just so fun. I haven't cut anything out of them yet because I want to read them. I want to, you know, get ideas. So, you know, when you're looking at a book like this, if you are a collector, a Society of Idea collector person, you have a notebook, you have a three ring binder, you have a comp book, you got something to write your ideas down in. So when you just go through a book like this and and write down anything that occurs to you, it doesn't have to be something you're necessarily going to do right then or immediately, but write down the ideas that occur to you. Maybe do a little sketch, a little doodle. I'm telling you, I can't stress it enough to write stuff like that down because you will never run out of ideas if you have some kind of an idea book. Um, let's see. Julia O says, I have 20 years of Somerset Studio and legacy piles of them. What do you do with um, I've kept probably, I probably about, I probably have about four stacks this tall that are up on the top of my bookcase that I just keep. And the rest I went through and pulled out. You know how they'll have either an article you like or those. I don't know when they started putting in those cardboard type or card stock, not cardboard, card stock type um, pieces of paper in there for you to like 
art and craft with, but I went through and I went, I, I went through, I can't even tell you how many I went through. I still have stacks of really old ones from the nineties, early two thousands, but uh, I went through the rest and pulled out what I wanted and recycled the rest. Yeah. Cause there's too many. There's just too many. You could probably sell them on eBay, Julia, if you want to get rid of them. But, you know, shipping magazines or books is not, you know, it's heavy. Especially now with everything being, like, jacked up. You know, you might want to wait till the first of the year <laughs> uh, to start shipping, you know, anything. Hi, Nick Tina. Brent, I said hi to Brenda D. Jane. Hi, Jane. So, anyway, these little books are just so inspirational and so full of ideas and that which speaking of i don't want to forget to read out of our um a thousand one ways to be creative today so i'll set that here not to well let's go glare let's put it over there but anyway that they're, they're just so um just so much one rare plant grows only on top of diamond deposits a brown bat can eat 1000 mosquitoes in an hour a man sued the Kellogg Company because he found no real fruit in his Fruit Loop cereal. <laughs> just, you know, just odd things. But look at the graphics. Look at the fonts, the typography. It's just so, I mean, I just want to hug these books. I'm telling you. They're so worth $4 all day. Yeah. <laughs> Aren't they? Aren't they cool? Am I the only one? Who else thinks these are cool? Am I the only one that thinks these are cool? What was that on the pyramid? Some of the biggest pyramids in the world are in Mexico. And so many of them are underground, you know, like uh, Janet's son does a uh, LIDAR for like the History Channel and different things like that. Different uh, shows. He does the LIDAR. And uh, that will, you can go over like the uh, forest, the jungle, <laughs> the Amazon. You can go over the forestation and, and you can see the buildings. And there are so many uh, cities under the forest that you just can't even believe how much is just, you don't know that they're there uh, until you do a LIDAR. So anyway... Octopus. I did know that. I did know that octopus have blue blood. And I think there's a, a um, what's it? There's some other. Uh, a, is it a snake? A beetle. There's a beetle that has that's blue. That they used to get the uh, like Egyptians would get the blue dye from. Was it a snail or a beetle or something? But um, yeah, they are right, Darlene. Aren't they interesting and cool? I know. He actually did a LIDAR in Mexico. So I know he, he, he did that. Didn't he do the one that was in? Yeah, he did. In the Philippines where they were looking for the Philippine uh, lost gold, lost World War II gold in the Philippines. I think he was did that one too. It was, I mean, he's done lots, but that was one of the shows that I watched. It took up to seven people to operate the giant Jabba the Hutt puppet from the Star Wars movies. See, I mean, just so much, so much. So anyway, I got nine. I mean, I got six of the nine. I got six, seven. I got seven of the nine of them. Um, but uh, yeah, so that was a good. That was a good find at my at my books a million. All right, so now let's go back on to our stamping. We'll read. We'll read out of our book in a little while. I got about thirty minutes till I gotta go put in my sweet potatoes. Um, let me get some of my stamp stuff out. We haven't got stamp stuff out in how forever, like a couple years, maybe. When was the last time we got stamp stuff out? And uh, I don't really know that I want to pull out. Well, maybe I'll show it. I'll, I don't know if I'll pull that out. But I'm going to pull out some of my stamp stuff, guys. We need to stamp. Let's see. Here's some of my stamp pads. Hang on. They're in boxes. I have them in pretty boxes. Let me see what's in this one. I hadn't planned on the hadn't planned on doing the stamping stuff today. So let's see what's in this. Okay, so. <clears throat> 
like Janet's gonna go, oh my gosh. Okay, let me back up the camera until we start actually stamping. All right. All right, so I got these boxes. But how, what happened? And I used to be really big into stamping uh, mail art where you back in the, oh gosh, mail art's been around for a long time. I can't even think of the last time I really did mail art and uh, post, um, you know, um, well, they call it mail art, but using stamps and post, um, you know, po art, post, postal art, if you will. And, um, and sending out and exchanging mail art and using stamps. So I know a lot of people know about how big the scrapbooking industry was, that they'd have a scrapbook store on every corner. Well, back in the day, there used to be stamping and stamping stores. And, um, and you bought them, the, there were, they weren't very few acrylic. They, um, they were all wood mounted wood mounted stamps like you know like wood mounted like this right here's one i got on clearance at uh i think hobby lobby had this one for no, normally two i don't know how much it normally was but i got for 237 when they were on clearance so um but this is how you would buy them and they weren't cheap hi afro sensible sister how you doing lisa nelson so how many of you have collected stamps back from the days of the wood mounted? Besides Janet. Janet has drawers and drawers. She keeps hers in, in like those metal. Well, I don't know. Are they metal, Janet? Your drawers that you keep your stamps in? But um, all right, here the original price on this one was $9.49. And, uh, and I still have some of the old catalogs where you'd have to order the cool stamps. And you could get them unmounted and have to mount them yourself. They were cheaper if you bought them unmounted. and uh, But back in the day, they only were wood mounted. So Nat said, I have so many wood mounted. Said, well, what I did with mine, I had so many, I, I had no room. No room in the end. No room in the end. <laughs> So what you can do if you want to unmount them, and you have to really not care about the wood part, you know. Someday they're probably going to be collectible and everything. So I want the wood mounted ones. But you, if you don't have room for them, you don't have room for them. You can put them in the microwave, not the acrylic. Now, when I say microwave, I don't mean, let me find an acrylic one real quick. Whoops. Not the acrylic ones. Not these. Do not put these in the microwave. <laughs> I'm not talking about these. The wood mounted ones. You can put them in the microwave for like 15 to 30 seconds and test your microwave. I'm, I'm giving you warning. But if you put them in the microwave for like just 15 seconds, this can peel. They'll peel right off. Now I can probably force this one, but they'll peel right off if you put them in the microwave. It, it heats up the glue. It doesn't damage the red rubber. I've never had one damage by putting them in the microwave for 15 seconds. Then they'll peel right off. Then you can put this on top of a page protector. And so what I did. Oh, and I also have this big plastic tub of stamps. So what I did was I put them on page protectors. And this is not all of them. I have more boxes of them than this, but I'll just pull this one to show you. So now my, a lot of my, not, these are also acrylic, but a lot of my wood mount, old wood mounted, look, they can go in page protectors. Now it's not neat. It's not, you know, if you're anal like Janet about <laughs> stamps, this is not going to make you happy. Okay. But it doesn't bother me at all. That way I can flip through them. I can see them. I've stamped them out on paper and I can just do this and see exactly what I got. Okay. So this is, this is the, the most efficient way. This is the most efficient way. Well, yeah, but see, you can also put these on blocks, Cheryl. You just put these on, a, on an acrylic block. You know, so you could, you know, yeah, if you have the room for hundreds and hundreds and thousands of stamps, then keep them on your wood blocks. <laughs> so, but, you know, my uh, stamping days go back to old mail art way back. 
And, um, you know, I don't know if y'all have ever been to a stamping convention. These are probably where I got most of these. Um, you know, well loved, well used. And, um, and then here's like Lost Coast Designs. I don't even know if they're in business anymore. I have old um, catalogs. Maybe I'll pull a couple. I've shown them before. Let's see if I can pull a couple catalogs. Where are they? Where are some of my catalogs? Here we go. I'll, pull a, I'll just pull a couple old catalogs to show you. So we'll do that too. So we'll just talk stamps. Okay. So, and I, I've given away and sold a bunch and because, you know, look. <laughs> no, you can't see them, but I know what they are. So, you know, you just have to do what works for you. And then Technique Tuesday, these, this company came out, this is from 2006. This is one of the few that's got a date on it, right? Yeah, oh, I do have some real cool stamps, Devin. These are the uh, tattoo set. And uh, it's got the koi, it's got the flames, it's got the skulls, it's got the hearts, wings. So um, it's got the tribal, it's just got all kinds of uh, cool, um, this one was called Skin Deep. And uh, they would come where you could put them in a, um, they would come like, kind of like where you put them in a binder. See, look, there's the hole punched for the binder. But, uh, oops, sorry guys, I'm, I'm really, I'm really close to the camera. So anyway, um, yeah, some really cool ones. I might stamp some of these out just to show them to you. But I mean, I know Janet's probably her skin. Her skin is probably <laughs> crawling with uh, the unorganization of them all. So, um, but I unmounted them all. I took them off of the wood blocks. And uh, then these are just some different ones from different stamp conventions and different um, stores and things. Another Technique Tuesday. This one's a 2005. Here's another one, 2006. And uh, so anyway, this is the, uh, and again, it's just in a shoebox with uh, page protectors. So I've got multiples of these like this where i can just flip and find what i want very simple now i have a lot of my smaller ones in these boxes which i'm going to be honest because they're in boxes i don't use them as much i don't use them as much now i have this set here or some of them right here so we'll just kind of go through this one i think was gifted to me i forgot who said I, I don't ask me who's gifted them to me but this one's from a stamp in the hand and this was 2007 and it has different um definitions of like there's penmanship pen a quill a nib and ink and it has like little stamp definitions and i love them when they came in these little cd cases like this because this was also handy if you <laughs> Jan, what Rachel? <laughs> sure what she... <laughs> Bye, Julia. And uh, oh, here we go. It's from Art Mingle. Olga sent me these. I write. I see. I write them in there. My books too. If you send me a book, I put a post-it note of who sent me the book in there. But anyway, uh, these came out in two thousand and seven. So um, yeah. So I have these. Some of my nib ones. And then here's another set. This this was came on here. That came on there like that. So this was a calligraphy uh, set here. And I should put. I'm gonna have to put rubber or just uh, stamps. Well, I, I don't want I don't want people to think it's postage stamps. So I'll have to say rubber stamps or acrylic stamps or something. Um, here's a little cross. So some of these are, are my recent purchases at Hobby Lobby that were on clearance. Like here's thanks a latte. This was $1.37. See, when I take these off, then people go, well, how much did you pay for that? If I take off the, the sticker here, they're going to go, oh, you paid $5.49 for that. No, I paid $1.37. <laughs> but, uh, and then here's some, just some background dots, the cross. Uh, I think Xandra sent me this one, I think. Um, one, of her, one of the little, uh, it's not a mermaid, but it's that type of little girl. And then um, 
also and oh so here's why why i was bringing these out somebody mentioned the uh these type of stamps from tim holtz that he came out with these some years ago and i think he's reissued these and maybe added some more so i have quite a few of those uh again here's some of my cats that are falling off cuddle time mm -hmm. so here's some cat cat stamps and I try to keep them on the acrylic, but, you know, it, I use them. They, they get less sticky. I, it, it just doesn't bother me to keep it like this. There's some other things I use for stamps, <laughs> little tubes and little tape dispenser centers. And um, th these are really old here. I can't even tell you how old these are. These are really pretty old. They're on a foamy with the, the rubber and the foam things. So I'll just kind of show you some of them. Y'all can talk about your stamp obsessions if you want. And uh, <laughs> I think this was a Tim Holt. Oh, no, I don't know if that was a, was that a Tim's set? I'm not sure. And then these blue ones, if they're like this, I know they're Prima. So Prima put out some stamps for a while. And so they're all blue. I don't have more, but they're just not in here. So that I know that's a Tim Holtz right there. And so these were Prima ones. It's another one of the cat ones there. And then some of these, like this is 2004 from Stampin' Up. And it's just a little heart. You can see it. I use, I've used it with the ink. I've used it with paint. <laughs> now, if you use any paint with any of this, you've got to wash them pretty quick, right? Because the acrylic paint will get into the... I don't really, you know, if it's something flat and big like this, I, I might use acrylic paint, but I won't use acrylic paint on like this. That's ink right there. <laughs> so, yeah, now this one's really old. This is, I think this is from 100 Proof Press. It's an old typewriter. So let me just show you a couple of, um, so some of these are really old. Let me cover up. Not that my, not that I live there anymore, but here's some of the old, um, what do you call it, a uh, package, you know, the uh, the envelopes that the catalogs came in. This one was from, doesn't have a, I don't see a uh, date on this one. This was like a flyer update. I like to find dates on these things, but they're, these are way back. I mean, I'm talking, uh, these are at least 25 years old some of these because I remember where I lived I lived in this house 20 years so these were before that so here's good stamp stamp goods out of Cal California used to have tons of stamp catalog uh, stamp Francisco this catalog was 1992 to 1993 hi Kathy Berg so this is from 92 to 93. I'm telling you, I've been in the stands for a long time. And um, let's see if I can see how, do I have the chart to say how much they were? You know, the order forms like this will tell you how much they were. Ah, here we go. So they started at 375 for a one by one inch and they went up to $10 for a three by four. And that codes on them. Look, A, B, C, D, E, they have the codes on them. So, like, for instance, this earth right here um, would be, uh, and, and I'm not sure what that one means, N, A. I don't know if that means not available. No, there's O, C, L. Okay. So, like this like this way, or whale here was an L. So, it would have been... 750 and this is the actual size these are the actual sizes of the stamps here in the stamp catalog so a stamp this big you would have paid 750 for back in 92 so you know they they weren't cheap let's see what else do we have here now this was a i don't think i ever ordered this but i, I used to get stamp catalogs all the time but this was the cutesy holly berry house and these were like the little bunnies. This is when they were in, this is 1993. This is 1993. <laughs> it's 
So anyway, so I still have a lot of these catalogs. I just pulled a handful. Here's an old Stampin' Up. What year was this Stampin' Up? 92. So this is a catalog from 1992. And Stampin' Up was like one of the big, you know, popular, every, you know, more easily accessible. But those of us that liked uh, different kind of stamps, we would go to places like 100 Proof Press. And what's this one here? Let me get out my envelopes here. This one was San Francisco. And they would have just different, um, I'm trying to look for dates. They would have different unusual stamps. This is 91, 92. So 91, 92. So it, they were just different. You couldn't find these kind of stamps everywhere. And if you were into mail art, M-A-I-L, mailing, mail art, you know, and you did stamping, this was the kind of stuff. Look, let's go back to those stamps here. This was the kind of stuff that you craved to have and that you just couldn't find. You couldn't just go to a stamp store back then, you know, and find these kind of stuff. Right, Janet? And these are actual size. They were small. You did mail art with <laughs> they were small. But uh, <laughs> bar. So anyway, uh, and again, I don't even know how many of these companies are still around. Hunter Proof Press was one of my favorites. Yeah, here's Hunter Proof Press. This is one of their uh, extra flyers. Um, but they just had odd things. But they weren't cheap. They were not cheap to buy. <clears throat> and they usually printed them either purple or blue so you couldn't make photocopies of them. Here's the new stamps for 1992 for 100 proof press. I don't know if this interests anyone. <laughs> you have the same catalogs, Janet, right? So just so much cool stuff. Oh, let's see. This is detailed rubber stamps. This was October 93. Again, you know, these are just the kind of stamps that you couldn't find at Stamping Up or, you know, they were like, I don't want to say that they're underground stamps, but, you know, I mean, they were just, they were just different. And if you did mail art, you know, there's Nos Nosferatu, Creature from the Black Lagoon. <clears throat> then here's hand carved stamps, which, you know, Janet and I both, I think you did get into hand, hot hand carved stamps, didn't you? This was a, um, a, an ex, 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 exhibition for 1992, hand carved stamps in, in, um, in San Francisco. And then I still have some of the order forms. Here's a, here's another detailed rubber stamp. And then let's see. This is fruit basket upset. And out of Seattle. <clears throat> Looking for a date. I don't see one on here. Uh, then this one was uh, Gumbo Rubber Stamp, or Gumbo Graphics. Gumbo Graphics. But look, look how cool. It's just art in itself, just the, just the catalogs. So yeah, this, this brings back memories if you were ever into stamps back in the day. Back in the 90s. This one's from 93. This one's from 1993. So that's some of the catalogs. I won't go through any more. I got a stack of them here, but I've shown I've shown them before as um, just because I like to keep them. 
And this is back you also, you know, before, and I always say before computers, and I don't mean that, I mean before desktops, you know, um, where we would have, um, let's see, this, this is a good one to show. Well, this was intact. But, and Janet and I both love this kind of stuff. If you're into any kind of printing or printing uh, press or rubber, any of that stuff. And so before we had windows, <laughs> we, you know, you use clip art books. You had clip art books. And I think Janet and I both have shelves and shelves and shelves of clip art books. And a lot of the rubber stamp manufacturers would use these clip art books to manufacture their stamps using this, these clip art. Uh, books but there's just nothing more satisfying than going flipping through a clip art book that's like it's just it makes me it makes me happy to to look through a cl old clip art book and again i got tons and tons of these uh, this one's probably not that old let's see this one is from 96 so yeah this one's from 96 but again, inspiration, ideas. You, you don't think Tim Holtz looks through these kind of things? <laughs> so I got tons of those kind of books too. Uh, let's see. All right. So now let's go back to the stamps themselves. <laughs> um, oh, the boxes. These boxes are from uh, Michael's. And they go on clearance, all, they go on sale all the time, 40% off all the time. And uh, they're, they're kind of big. Uh, they have different sizes. I've got, uh, I've got two different sizes here, but they come in more sizes. I don't like, I don't love using, I love the way they look. They're beautiful. They're pretty. They look good on a shelf. But I, if I don't see the stuff, I'm, I'm less likely to use it. That's why in my room here, I've opened shelves, floor to ceiling, all the way around the room, where I can see all my stuff. If it's in these boxes, I have this sitting on top of the box, so I know. Look, don't forget, you got stamps and, and stamp pads in those boxes. Because <laughs> if I don't see it, I don't use it as much. Unless I really need something, then I'll go dig it out, right? Okay, so um, let me just, let's see, where can I put everything on? Let's, let me find a place to, let's see, let me move this, and then I'll have a place to just put things out, and you can see them, and I can put them back in. Okay, so we want to stamp my new stamps today. <laughs> so the boxes, this is a big dream, big, dream big darling, and this one has more stamps. This one is the same size, and it just has all kinds of laugh, smile, faith, shine, and it's the same size as that one. And this one has stamp scent pads in it. This one is bigger than those two, and it's called Enjoy the Little Things, and it's a bigger one. It's probably about six inches deep, and um, I don't know how big, 14 inches. And this one has acrylic stamps acrylic stamps on the sheets so and then this one this is just a one of those totes here and these have a lot of these have a lot of my favorites and old ones in and a couple of alphabets too but they have um this is my dig through and it's also got a lot of my hand carved stamps got a lot of my hand carved ones in here that I've carved over the years <clears throat> so maybe we'll go kind of through some of those <laughs> I told y'all guys oh, all right so let's see here let me get a piece of paper here let me get one out from under here and then later I've got to do my uh, inktober Let's see. I don't know if I want something that big because that flashes it out. Flashes out the camera. Let me get a smaller piece of paper. Here we go. There we go. All right. So let's see if I can do this. And not flash out the camera. All right. Okay. I think we're ready. 
Let's zoom in one. Here there you go. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of show some of them. Just so you can kind of get an idea of what's out there. My dig through my worst nightmare. <laughs> oh my gosh, Janet. Okay, so again, if I know who they're from, like I know the, these are Timmy, Tim Holtz ones, you know, maybe I should zoom in a little bit more. I want y'all to be able to see them. And if you get ideas and inspiration, you don't have to have every stamp, but you know, if you want to, uh, again, these are Prima, if they're blue on the back, those are Prima ones. They came out with quite a few cool ones a few years ago. And um, so anyway, I did collect up a lot of his, and I forget what they're called. Somebody tell me, are they, um, well, they're like schematics, but I think he had a name for these. I don't remember what they called these, but um, they came in like every kind of cameras and gumball machines. And here's a typewriter. They came in every kind. Will you stamp some of your art in your art? Oh, yeah. I, I use them in my journals, um, Leona. That's where I use them because I don't do mail art anymore. If, you know, if I was still into mail art, you know, um, you know, Nick, Nick Van Talk type mail art, then I would use them in that. But I don't do that anymore. You know, blueprint. That's what they're called. Blueprints. Yeah. They're called blueprints. Thank you, Julie. And uh, oh, here's another one of the cat ones. I love this cat one. <laughs> that goes on this sheet here. <clears throat> so I have this little set of cats. But um, and then this one I think was a hundred, maybe it was a hundred proof press. This was um, a different language, different languages, uh, alphabets in different languages. I think it's Greek and Latin. I think it's the alphabet in different uh, lang in different ancient languages. And again, I just have this here because I use it all the time. And same thing for little things like this. Here's another little cat. There's a little cat uh, that goes on that cat sheet. Okay, so back to some more blueprint ones. Um, they're just they're just kind of really cool and they are fun to use these are really super cool to use in your um, art journals because they just have like a lot of um, movement to them you know this one is not uh, I don't know if that's one of the ones or not see I don't I don't keep up with who made them and stuff that much anymore Let's see. Yeah, Kathy, I have mine stamped in um, on sheets. The ones I, I don't know if you were here a little while ago when I showed some of the ones that are on pay, in page protectors. Those were at one time anyway, all stamped out on a, on a sheet and put in a page protector. The, my unmounted ones. But um, I, I, I'm going to be honest. When I go to use these, I like digging around. I like digging around and just flipping through and using them like this. I, I enjoy it. You know, I, I enjoy just, I don't care if they're not that neat. I mean, I know it drives Janet crazy, but there's a key, but you know, she's not here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> she's not here. So anyway, <laughs> but these are all red rubber ones curiosity the definition of curiosity and um, so alarm clock and i don't care how messy they are look i don't clean them that no, it's terrible but uh yeah i chart here's another there's a little pen one pen nib and then i have the little tassels these came i think in one of the Tim Holt sets. There's an alarm clock, a ticket stub. This is another one of the um, Prima ones because it's on the blue. It's on the blue rubber. So these are some of my my little typewriter. Believe it or not, this will still stamp. <laughs> I enjoy the hunt. Exactly, Devin. Exactly. <laughs> here's one of my this is um peace in hebrew i hand carved that 
on a magic rub. These are the best. If you don't have uh, access to like the red rubber and the stuff that you can carve in, the big uh, speedball sheets, that some of them are pink and some of them are the gray. Um, these little magic rubs are the best little uh, magic rub erasers are the best carving stamp carving erasers ever. And you can also you could do it on both sides if you really wanted to. But uh, that's hand carved. Here's another one of the tassels. And then this is just a little a little flourish. Here's a oh, there's another one of those cats. They're everywhere, like nine lives. Put it back on that sheet. These little uh, Prima uh, ones. They have a whole set of these, and I'll probably come across them in here. A little cat paw print. So anyway, um, I just keep these because they make me happy, and I use them occasionally in my art journal. So I just keep these face up, Janet. I see them all. <laughs> And uh, yeah, my little typewriter. Maybe I'll let me see. Let me get out a stamp pad so we can just do some random stamping. Uh, oh, I have my black ones up here, and these don't even include my alphabets. I'll have to show you how I do my alphabets, how I store my alphabets. Some of y'all have seen before. So let's see. I'm not sure about this stamp pad. I haven't I haven't tested this. We'll see if it's any good. This stamp pad. And I should get, see, that's not very dark. I should get out um, a stamp pad to, here's my stamp pad, Janet. <laughs> uh, let's, instead of using this one, which I don't even know how old this one is, this stays on. Uh, let's get out my stamp pad here. And uh, this is an illustrated faith. And let's see how old this one is. I'm not sure. Let's see. This one's a little juicier, I think. And then now this is a cushion, right? So if you don't have a cushion thing like this, you know, the kids foam, the foam sheets. There, that's better. The kids foam sheets will work to, to support your, um, to support your uh, stamping. So there's that one. So, I know, right? And, you know, this is how I clean them. I clean them like this. <laughs> All right. So, this is kind of like my go-to at the moment set. And my cats right here. My cats. Oh, let's do this one because I forget what's on it. And sometimes I just put the stamp on the pad. Sometimes I do the pad, you know, this way. I think you get more ink when you do it this way, all edge to edge, but it can be a mess too. So let's see what this is. Okay. Let's clean it off a little. So this one is, yeah, different uh, alphabets right there. I think I got that at a stamp convention. And then, again, I showed you this set here, calligraphy set. So I have that sitting here. And then I haven't used my little um, Santor, uh, Santoro one. I think Xandra sent me that. And then these are here just because I got them on clearance. So these are my, like, and, again, I, I probably bought these six, eight months ago. But they're the newest ones that I, I got on uh, clearance. So that's why they're here. And then, again, the calligraphy writing set ones. So, yeah. So, let's just put these right back. Well, you know what? I'm going to put these in, in my box because I haven't used them lately. So, I have these sitting on top of my boxes because then it's like, don't forget me. Don't forget me. <laughs> oh, wait. It's 1030, guys. Real quick, I got to go put in my sweet potato. See, I wrote myself a note. 10.30, got to go put in my sweet potatoes. They take an hour and a half. So let me do. Okay, there we go. I'll be right back.
back to stamps. All righty. So thanks for everybody here lurking. I got, got lurkers, so I guess it's interesting to see stamps. I mean, Dan and I could talk stamps all day. So let's see. wonder where Dee Dee got those. Pre I got them at Michael's. Yeah, I got them at Michael's. Hobby Lobby, I think, carries them too. But, um, yeah, you can probably get them at either place. Joann's probably carries them, although I don't have a, a Joann's close to me. So um, I don't know what Joann's carries anymore. But Michael's and Hobby Lobby are close to me. Okay, so this big box here has, wait, let me, let me move my stamp pads here. So I got my, a lot of my stamp pads are in here, my bigger ones. And there's like, I've got the Distress Oxide, the Distress ones, the, some smaller ones at the bottom, archivals and just diff, every color. Um, so yeah, this is, this one has most of my stamps in, stamp pads in it. But then I also have quite a few that are just like, um, like I have a lot of the black ones that are loose. And then I have the trays that are handy. Here's some handy ones. And some of these, some of these are my collection because I know some of them don't work anymore, but I'll show them to you anyway. And I keep them because they're Nick Bantock and he doesn't make them anymore. <laughs> so here's some other stamp pads that are a little older and again um these are the distress ink ones in here and i keep rubber bands around them so that the lids don't pop off but i don't know how many of you remember these the nick bantock ones and ranger put them out and i think these came out before tim holtz started doing his and they're in in tins they're in vent like vintage tins there's the Van Dyke Brown, the Cerulean Azure, Lamp Black. And I loved them because they were in these little tins. And I don't even know how old they are because they don't like to put dates on this stuff because then once it looks too dated, they can't sell them. But sometimes back in the day, they did put dates. But anyway, these were like Ranger uh, stamp pads before, before or right after Tim or right during Tim Holtz. So these are all the Nick Van Talk ones. I don't know if any of y'all remember them. I really want to see the dates, but I'm not seeing any. But it says collage art by Nick Van Talk. So this is his artwork. And I've I've pulled out my Nick Van Talk uh, books before. You know, he, he's the one that did Griffin and Sabine, if y'all aren't familiar with that but this is his artwork on all these different ones and I don't even know how many different colors there were <clears throat> there was tons there was a ton of colors charcoal gray chrome yellow and then that's his art on the cut on there and then these Artie Dar sent me these years ago and I still love and I bet they still I know they still smell but I don't know that they still work these are the old ranger scented ones <laughs> yeah, I, I'm sure these are probably dried up, but just because they're Nick Van Talk, I'll keep them just because of the their Nick Van Talk. But these are uh, the old Ranger scented ones. Let's see if there's any, I got still no, can't see a date. But this is my favorite smell. I love this smell. Coconut cream. Oh my gosh, you can still smell it. Now, what is it still? Yeah, look, it's still juicy. <laughs> I'll tell you. Mm -mm -mm. The coconut cream. Now, the rubber bands are like ready to be falling apart. These rubber bands are old on them. But they had coconut cream, mint julep, blueberry crush. Strawberry Spritz, Orange Whip, Banana Slide. Look, look how old the rubber bands are. And then what else? I know I have a couple coconut cream. Lime Twist. There's the other coconut cream. 
Java Fizz. And then these were a couple of their vintage inks, floral, and they were scented. So these were the old Ranger before Tim Holtz. Well, I don't know when Tim Holtz came to Ranger, so I don't want to date him. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to put a date on him. <laughs> So anyway, so these are just some of my other ones that I have. I keep out a handful of archival, and the, I use these all the time. Okay, so th these kind of stay handy. These are more my vintage ones, but, you know, like I said, I can't throw away my Nick Van Top. And then I, you know, have more stays on, Memento. You can't have too many black pads. Just saying. They're, and the different things are for different ones. Some are waterproof. Some are, you know, they're just different. And then I've got the way I store my alphabets. I'll show you that real quick since I'm right over here on the shelf. So some of my tiny stamps are in here. And then my alphabets are in these like old cigar. Um, they're like divided already. And um, so these are a couple of my, these are three fonts in here. I use these right here all the time. These uh, kind of basic fonts here. So, and then they're just like in these little boxes like this for alphabets. But one of the easiest thing, and this was Paula. You all remember Journal Artista? She discovered these. Um, she discovered using ammo cases <laughs> so you can get these at any uh sporting goods store and they're ammo cases but they're perfect for holding your tiny your tiny stamps <laughs> so if y'all remember when these came out a long time ago at michael's and you know different craft stores and they're these little tiny ones look there's about as big as my fingernail these are perfect for storing uh, Debbie says she's getting hungry hearing those names. I just saw that. Hi, Sharon L. Um, so these were perfect for storing your small stamps. And they come in different sizes. So you get this size. These are even smaller stamps. So that they, you know, but they all, they fit in there so that they're real easy to keep your um, fonts, your alphabets all in order. Okay. And then here's a bigger size. But these are small ones as well. So you can just, these are real tiny ones. So you can, and, and I mean, these boxes are like two bucks. You know, well, they were. I don't know what they are in, in, in today. But anyway, they're perfect for storing your alphabets. Let's see. And then when I have my hand carved, I have a whole bunch of hand carved alphabets. So here I hand carved out of uh, the Hebrew alphabet in magic rub erasers. So these are just, I keep them in a bag, you know, because it's just the easiest way to keep a hand carved set. So I have a Gothic set, a Hebrew set. Um, I've got, I don't know, three, maybe four sets that I've hand carved. And um, whoops. And then I just have just random things like here's some other hand carved stuff that I have. My owl, my bee. This is another bee. These are just some hand carved ones that I've done. And I've just got some of my acrylic blocks in here. Another hand carved cat. Um, more blocks, date stamps. So I just keep kind of keep these here because I use these on, ha on Happy Mail and stuff. So I keep those just handy. So you see, I do use this stuff, just not as often as I used to or could. Here's another one. These are those little um, match boxes that I got that I haven't finished making those, but I made a couple, a couple of the little match boxes. I think those are Tim Holtz or Ranger, another little acrylic block, some more of the little stamp sets there. So you see these little tiny stamp sets. There's another little stamp set. So... Yeah, I need to I need to finish these or just something. But anyway, little matchbox. I think those are put out by Ranger. So I have all this stuff on shelves because then I'll use it. 
if I see it. Okay, so let's move some of this. I'll just keep that one out just to do some practice. Because I know that one's juicy. All right. So let's go back to um, and these. Can, these can go in um, one of the boxes. Let's see which box here. Okay, so I'm not sure which ones to show y'all or if, you know, how interested you are in the stamps, but I don't know. I think they're fun. It's fun to go through. Let me put these. These are these are probably the only wood mounted I even have left because I've unmounted them off. Y'all saw earlier where I've unmounted them and put them in, in page protectors and sleeves so I can flip through them. So these will just go on my shelf for now because they really need to be unmounted and put in those page protectors because yeah i don't have room to store um wood mounted anymore okay so let's see what we got in here so these are different acrylic sets okay those are stuck together all right some of these are probably those michael ones those michaels when they go on clearance uh, that's probably what these are here's the unicorn set um, these right here I got from Xandra. These are stamping um, Stamperia ones. Stamperia. These are the undersea ones. I think you can kind of still see them. If you want me to stamp them, I can, you know. But this is the back of a an, um, uh, an, um, skin diver, scuba, scuba diver. Well, you know, underwater guy. <laughs> and then this one is the octopus with the helmet on it. And uh, these are Stamperia, pretty sure. So here's a steampunk set. See, I'm trying to keep this white paper here so you can kind of see. It has a feather and the corset and the, uh, what are these hats called? Um, steampunk hats, there's a name for those. Somebody tell me. I know, uh, I know somebody will know the name of the steampunk hats. Here's some backgrounds, some different cool backgrounds. I'll try to remember where I got them. A lot of these acrylic ones, um, you can you got these at Michaels and stuff. No, not a top hat. There's a name for them, and it's right on. I can. It's right on. Fascinator. Thank you, CB. They're called fascinators. <laughs> Thank you, CB. Uh, so here's another like space. See, like I need to use this guy in my in my collage, right? My little. Here's some bees, a honeycomb. Qu bee quotes, be happy. But I love the I love the honeycomb and I love the bee. And then again, these are some more uh, just background stamps. I think this might be a. Is this a ranger? No, Stampendous. This is Stampendous. <laughs> Here it is. Here's the whole, there's the whole set. Stamperia Mixed Media. I bought this from Zandra. Or she might have gifted it to me with a purchase. I don't remember, but uh, that's where I got that. So if you like if you like anything Stamperia, go see Zandra while she's still selling. <clears throat> Here's some typewriters. Um, here's a, this is a Carabelle, and this is another one I got, bought from Zandra. Bought this one from Zandra. It's so cool. Look at it. This is what it looks like. Just so cool. And this is an old set. This is, uh, an ink bottle set and Art Mingle, I think, sent me these as well. Well, probably not the little fish bones. I don't think that was part of it. But uh, you can see the different nibs. They're all different ink bottles and nibs. And it's so handy to have... Oh, here's it. Here you go. It's so handy to have them in these CD cases. Because look how, you know, it's just they, they stay together. You could, you could archive them, index them. And uh, this one came out 2005. So it's not that old, 2005. <laughs> when I go back into 91, that's when I think they're old. This stuff, 
this stuff is real cool. And I don't know if you can still buy it or where to buy it. But I at, at a stamp convention one year, they had a bunch of, hi, Trisha Green. Denise loved her stickers, by the way. She loved her stickers. Um, this stuff, you, I bought a big baggie full of it at a stamp convention one year, and it was like cast-offs and different shapes and different sizes of it, and it's the stuff that you can heat up. Let me find something to, that would work really well with it. Let me look around here. Maybe that. Hmm. Maybe this zipper, just to show you. This will probably be good on my little... Um, I want something that'll that will show up really well. So, and you can reuse it. So you can reuse this stuff. So what you do is you heat it up with the heat gun, and it and it it'll, you'll see it flatten out. Okay. I'm just doing half of it. And then you mash it into something dimensional. I hope this works on the zipper. I just picked it up because it was dimensional. You mash it into whatever dimensional. And then look. It prints it. Now, I don't know how good of a stamp this particular item would be. Maybe I should have done some scissors or something. But then you can stamp it. <laughs> and it's just cool stuff. There we go. Yeah, let me do it again. So look. So there's the zipper and the pull. Isn't that cool? <laughs> so this stuff is really, really cool. I know, right? But I don't know what, I don't even remember what this is called. Uh, you might look up stamp foam or something like that online. There's a name for it. But I haven't looked for it or seen it around lately. And so you'd have to probably order it, but you can you can stamp make any kind anything a stamp. You have some of this stuff too. I have a bag of it somewhere, and more of it floating around. Literally, it's like weighs nothing. It's like just a piece of like it's like a it feels like um, a packing peanut. It feels like a packing peanut. That's the kind of stuff it feels like. All right, let's keep going here. Let's see what else we got in here. Because y'all know I like to dig. <laughs> uh, all right, so here's another one of my alphabets. This is just, uh, this is a bought one, not a hand-carved one. But it's a, uh, like a vintage um, gothic type, very fancy letters. And uh, <clears throat> where's my stamp here? And then if you want to color them in, you want to make sure that you're using waterproof ink, like stays on, you know. But there you go. So you can see how fancy you can get. All right, so there's alphabets. And I've got tons. I've got bags and bags of these. They're in a whole nother box. I didn't even pull that out. But I've got bags of alphabets other than my hand-carved ones. All right, so, you know, some random, just a little acrylic ones. These are like, you get these all the time. I got this for 32 cents, clearance probably at Hobby Lobby. And then they had the stars and the hearts and the different ones. Here's a texture. These are just awesome for your art journaling. Here's a cat that's been uh, uh, unmounted. <laughs> it's a cat. This one here. And just different. There's a watch hand. Here's an oh, see, this needs to go. This fan needs to go in my uh, uh, over here in the bowl where I showed you all those. <clears throat> Here's another alphabet. Here's uh, this is just a rubber band to close something. Here's another alphabet. 
from just think, you know, you, you can buy these things like at Michael's all the time that were in the dollar bin and stuff like that. Here's another one. I think this is another one of the Primo ones, although it, it, it's not blue, so maybe not. But uh, there's a little running rabbit. Wood nut. There it is. Stars and hearts and flowers. Oh my. Oh, here's a Janet stamp. Look. I, and when I say Janet, ha I'm telling you, Janet probably has every one of these that I have. So don't y'all be, don't y'all be dissing on me and letting Janet have a pass. I'm telling you, she has these probably lined up in a drawer, alphabetized. <laughs> yeah, and that mustache. So there's a little ruler. <laughs> oh, there's another one of these arrows. Oh, this one's a solid arrow and one's an open arrow. So you could, uh, so what you do with these kind of things is you would, you'd stamp this with either watercolor or a color. Right, you'd stamp this with a color, and then you'd stamp the, the overlay over the top in black, and then you'd have it color underneath. Okay. So, and then these are some of my favorites. I've used and used and used these little babies forever. Um, they're they're really old. Is this one? This one was a. Uh, Something show stamp company. Got probably got that at a uh, stamp convention. Little crayon star. Some more of these little textures. These are just make your own little borders and stuff like here's a Prima one because it's blue, so I know it's Prima. And then here's a little Prima alphabet. Prima alphabet because it's blue. And then here's a random little little border. <laughs> And, you know, I've got all the acrylic blocks. I have acrylic block in every size. I have long, skinny acrylic blocks that I can put this on. So it's, you know. So, yeah. So these little Prima ones, these were so cute. I bought them because they were cute. Have I used them that much? No. But I bought these because they were just so darn cute. They're just so tiny. It reminded, I think it reminded me of the old, uh, what do you call it, uh, Hunter Proof Press ones. So this was a whole set. I think there's a little tiny bee. Uh, there's all kinds. There's a little terrarium. A little teapot. A little spoon. Just all kinds of... See? Shh, shh. See, ASMR. Um, here's some more. <laughs> there's one that says fun. I'm just looking for the little, the little, there's one that says play. There's another coffee cup. Ooh, there's some glue on that one. I'll just leave that one in the corner. Just got some glue on it. Some glue leaked out in the corner of that <laughs> box. So what else? And just all different kinds. All right, so that's all the Prima ones. Oh, wait, here's two more. There's a clock and a little bottle. Then there's just all kinds of little designs. These are so useful. They're just so handy to use. Oh, here's a point the finger. You like that? You like that, Devin? Little butterflies. Here's a hand carved, one of my hand carved uh, star shines. Um, not sure what that says. There's a big note. Checkerboard. A feather. It even I even have a uh, barcode. <laughs> oh, this is an old one. There's a fly. It's a dove. That's one of my hunter proof press. That's really old from the 90s. Oh, here's another one. A, a pocket watch. Prima pocket watch, a little bird cage, and then just random little dots and circles and things like that. So, It's kind of good to go through them because then I remember which box they're in. Because they, I do, 
they're not really necessarily in any particular box. Now these and this, I want to keep out because this needs to be used. This and this really needs to go in the uh, flat one. I have a flat one that needs to go in. There's my bees. I probably should keep my bees out. This needs to go in the flat one. This one I need to keep out. So these I need to keep out. This, um, uh, I don't know if I'd use it that much. I'll, I'll keep it out because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you the uh, new ones that I got. My Stampendous ones. We're going to stamp all these out in a minute. All right, so let's see. Um, now let's go ahead and put the corset. I'll put that in here because that goes with that style. These can go in the flat box. Okay, so let's move this box. <laughs> All right, let's see what's next. It's this big box here. These have some stencils in it. Actually, these stencils need to go in my stencil folder. My current stencils that I'm using here, that these need to go in here because otherwise I'll forget I have those stencils. So those will go in there. Okay, so let's see what we have in here, shall we? <laughs> what did Janet say? Oh, greasy. Oh, okay. She's talking to somebody else. Okay, so we'll keep these in um, this box. So I have different ones. These are the uh, Dilution, uh, uh, Dino, Re Diane Reevely, Diane Reevely ones. Here's, oh, let's go, let's go up here. Because I think if I prop this up with a coffee cup, then we can look at them. Okay, we can look at them. This is a Jane da Davenport Narwhal one. Let's straighten it. And then I just have different textures. These I need to really pull out to use in my journaling because I will use these more if I have them out. But they're just different. Oops, there's one on the back. These are different um, grids and journaling spots. So I'm going to move those to that spot. Here's a little mini alphabet. Not to use as an alphabet, but just like a, like a general you know, stamp that like a calendar so that you could circle, like you could use this as like a perpetual calendar. So you could just put your date over this and then use this for, I should give this to Denise. Oh, she would die if she got into stamps. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. So these are just some flourishes. I, I don't know how the best way to show this. Am I too, am I close? Can I back out? I can back out a little. There we go. There we go. <laughs> so I just have all different ones. There's teacups. These are some of the illustrated faith ones that have the faith sayings on them. This is another one here. That's an illustrated faith. I'm not sure about this font or this alphabet where I got this alphabet from. But I keep these acrylic ones on their sheet just to kind of keep them together until I use them a lot and then they don't stick anymore. And then I could still stick them with a little bit of glue stick, but, you know, they usually stay on there fairly well. All right, here's another, here's another illustrated faith. This is another illustrated faith. Oh, this heart came off. This heart goes on this one here. So those, and these are real, this is real handy right here for putting down like a light blue, pink, yellow, just putting down a little swatch of this color. And then you can stamp on top of it is what, I'm, you'll have to be more specific, Stephanie, is what Tim holds. Because I'm going probably faster than, <laughs> I won't remember what uh, is what a Tim holds. Here's another calendar one. Let's stack these up right here. And these, a lot of these are uh, the ones, like, look, the truck's gone. I use the truck for something. I never put it back on here. But these are some of these Michaels ones, I think, um, that came in, you know, that you get them on clearance all the time and go on clearance. Here's another. This is a planner sticker one. See how it has little planner things, which I don't plan, but I like the little stickers. I mean, the little stamps because I'll use them for other things. Okay. Here's some arrows and, again, planner type. Well, you can't see it there. But they're little uh, flags to, for planners. Oh, here. This, this is it here. Mm -hmm. 
And here are the months, weeks. This is another one of those textured ones that needs to go over there because I'll use the textures. Here's another um, illustrated faith one. See, I'm separating them. I'm sorting. <laughs> another illustrated faith. This one is, um, let's move this over to the planner section. <clears throat> Hearts and kind of steampunk. See, this one right here. All right, so I know y'all are going to go, oh, my gosh, I'm going to pull this. <laughs> this needs to go in my society of, society of um, so, uh, Ilza Collectors. <laughs> Society of Idea Collectors. It's a we're gonna pull this one out and use it. I'm gonna stick it on top of my um uh stamp pad there. All right, so here's hearts and stars, falling heart. Well, I guess it could be either way. Still no mail, Janet. Oh my gosh. Last time I asked my post office lady, she found it. It was in Oklahoma, and she goes, it's still heading her way. It's still, because the last time this happened, remember? The last box I sent you took like two weeks. I don't know why. I don't know why you're, you're not that far away where I got my box from California in three days. And that's um, a week and a half now that I sent that to you. Another, um, whoops, another illustrated faith one. Butterflies. All right, let's move this over here butterflies flowers and leaves this one's kind of cool you know what i think i'm gonna do I'm gonna, i might do um well i was gonna say i want to do a giveaway of some of these flat stamps but again i could if especially if it goes overseas y'all may never see it so what do y'all think should i get should i do maybe i'll do just an envelope with separate ones and then hopefully they'll get to you should I do a couple of giveaways of these flat stamps and, and hope? Here's what I'll do. I'll do it. And internationals can be in the giveaway too. But if it does, if you don't get it, don't email me. I, I won't have a replacement. I'm going to do a giveaway. I'll do y'all. I'll do some giveaways with some of these flat stamps. But if they don't get to you, they get lost in the mail. Yeah. Then it's, it's like, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help you. So I'm, I'll give away this one. And I'll do separate ones. Here's some birds. This is a good one. There's some birds and a little, um, what do you call it, dragonfly. I'll do a giveaway with that. Let's just see what else we got in here. Um, this is from Terry L. She sent me uh, a little um, a little stamp. Let's see. That goes over here. Uh, no, that should go in that other box. Here's a little um, typewriter key and give that one away i'll do it but it, again guys if they get lost you know well I'd be, i'm sorry not sorry of course i would be sorry they got lost but if they get lost it's it's the mail call the mail <laughs> call the post office <clears throat> here's a whole bunch of words um chill out thanks hello hope that's a good one for a giveaway and they're gonna fit in an envelope right so a lot of these are those michael's ones those Michaels, uh, and they're just acrylic, you know, and I'm not sending out the ink. Y'all got to get your own ink. <clears throat> I love this one. I need to remember to use it. It's got the phases of the moon and like grids and things like that. I always forget about this. I'll put that with this. Okay, let's see what else we got here. Uh, John, uh, and some of these came that matched. They matched a paper pad like this one I know does. This matched the Michaels paper pad, the stacks. You know, the shine bright magic stars, the gem papers that that goes with that. Same thing for this. See the little gems and the stars that goes with the paper pad. And oh, here's another planner one. This has got them again. I will give these to Denise when she advances, when she advances to stamps. I don't know if that'll ever happen, but look, there's all different planner ones. Denise would love these if she would use them. I just don't know that she would. She's just getting into stickers and washi tape right now. <laughs> Another alphabet. I'll give this one away. Give that alphabet away. 
because I can just put these in an envelope and mail them to you. Business size envelope, right? Hello, sunshine. Thank you. Thinking of you. This one is, this one has a paper pad. And I have the stacks. I have the paper pads that go with these. This has the animal one. This is the animal one. Same for this one. Stay wild. That's what it is. This is the stay wild paper stack. See, look, here it is again. <laughs> All these came with that, or not came with, they were purchased separately. But um, but uh, these are the go with my stack. And same for this alphabet. This is the alphabet that goes with that stack. This one, I don't know what this one goes with. These are like little um, flags. I'll get that away. Here's a party time. These are nice because of the borders. That would be a good one for Denise. Same thing for this one. I won't use these. Um, these. Uh, I, I'm getting too many. I can't give away tons in one week. Um, here's this is a stack. This these um, and they're not they're they're clear acrylic. They just put them on just to you know let y'all know if you buy these they're not in color. <laughs> I don't know if you're a newbie stamper and you buy these you think oh they're they're not in color no they're just acrylic you have to have your own ink and your own stamp that may be self-explanatory by if you're a if you're a stamper or been around acrylic stamps but when they sell them like this you think well they're in color well i don't understand <laughs> they're just acrylic they're just acrylic here's another one that i need to use more because i really like this this is the star charts there Let's see, this is another, um, this is another uh, Illustrated Faith one. That needs to go down there in the Illustrated Faith stack. Okay, some more, let's see, let's put that right here. Um, this is a planner one too. See, they're made for planners. They're tiny. They're made for planners. Uh, this is a, not Illustrated Faith, but it's a Faith one. That should go in the Faith stack under there. Same for this one. It's another faith one. See, I need to separate them and sort them like, like we're doing now. Okay, what do I have in here? Oh, this was one of, um, this was a little thing that Michael sold, I think, a couple years ago. And it came with the stencils. It came with stencils. Well, I don't know if this one came in there. But, um, or no, this was a pin and gear. This was, that had to be Walmart. Pin and gear is Walmart, right? And look, it's got all these little stencils. This needs to go in my stencil thing. Look, this these need to go in my stencils, my folder over there with stencils. So I'm going to move these over to the stencil pack because I won't use them in here. Here, if I'm thinking stencil, I'm not going to remember they're in here. So let's put that over there. All right, let's finish this box and we'll do the giveaway before we do another box. Um, yeah, for Bible journey, Rachel. Yes, exactly. And then uh, here's my little skelly. I use, I've used that a couple times in October, but there's a skelly. And these are just random little things. Like there's just, um, you know, patterns. Here's another. Is this a fate? No, this is a planner one. Another planner one. I don't know if this is interesting to anybody, but I'm having fun. More planners. So I got a stack of planner stuff. If Denise ever takes up stamping. I don't even know where I got this. That's pretty cool. I'm going to put that over here in my pat in my background stamps. Okay, let's see. Here's just plastic. This plastic is awesome for a lot of different things. Um, there's another. That's an Illustrated Faith one. Here's that car. Remember I said, oh, I don't know where that truck went. <laughs> <There it is. laughs> oh, I don't even know where to put that one. And then here's another, here's a little crown. I don't know if that doesn't go with this, but it could. But I don't know if here. It's on this stack. Some glasses. I, I think I've I've bought this at Michael's. Uh, I bought this at Michael's like <laughs> five times. Because I love ink pens and, you know, I, that's my name. That, I've gone by ink, Inky Well online for going on 30 years. <laughs> Here's another. This one's an old set here. This is, uh, I don't know, but it's uh, Celtic lettering. I love this set. 
I should pull this out so I could use it more. But all right, so let's put these back in here. Oh, there's a little. Th this is the foam that goes on the stamp pad. This needs to go over here because that's where they are. All right, so let's see here. Let's put my faith ones there so I know where those are. These little ones in the middle. These off to the side. Okay. And see, it's not full because I pulled out a big stack over here to use. So I've got, I pulled all this out to keep out to use. All right, so, oh, I know what I want to put in here. I'll put this alphabet in here. Again, I got this on clearance. It was a Tim Holtz. Oh, wait, but not this. I must have put that on there to stamp with. I probably used this as a stamp pad. <laughs> I use that as a stamp pad. But uh, this needs to go with my um, textures. Okay, so, but there's, these are uh, Alpha, Tim Holtz alphabets that were on clearance. I'm telling you, I did not pay full price for these. I would have bought these probably for a couple bucks each at Hobby Lobby or something. Okay, so let's move this box. All right, now let's see how many I got here to give away. Let me get some envelopes. Oh, they're downstairs. Hubster says, I need some business envelopes. So I gave them, sent them all down there with them. But I'll get some post it notes here. All right. So here's what we're going to do. Let me, uh, let me explain how our giveaways work. And we'll do, I'll do, uh, oh, wait. <laughs> Janet's the only mod. CB, can you help? Will you help Janet? Because <laughs> she's going to be the only mod here. And she might have already run out the back door. Of course, everybody helps. Everybody always helps uh, with the, uh, let me get another piece of paper. They always help with the giveaways. But let me tell you how they work. Okay. How the giveaways work is when I type in go, don't do anything now. When I type in go, let me get my phone and let me get up random.org. Put in a number between 1 and 100. Okay, 1 to 100. One number only. One number only. Okay. I can't stress that enough. Between 1 and 100. It doesn't matter if, you know, because it's going to be who's first. So it's the first person closest without going over. There's my rules right there. I should write them. I should make a little, a little, uh, you know, flyer for this. <laughs> yes. And Rachel said, make sure you are on live chat. There we go. Thank you, Rachel. Make sure you are on live chat because if you are on top chat, I will, we'll, the mods will, and me will we'll still see you if we're on live chat, but you may not see everybody. So make sure you're on live chat. Okay, hang on. Let me get over to random.org. Don't put anything in yet. And I'll do two at a time. Okay, so this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to go, let's get to random.org. Okay, so I'm at random.org. We have our little window here from 1 to 100. And when I generate a number, it'll give us a random number. Okay? All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do two at a time. And, um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, do not enter if you do not want me. I, I mean, I can't tell you. It's not happened a lot, but it does happen. Somebody will win. I'll never hear from them again. They don't give me their address. I never see them again. It's like, you know. So if you don't want me to have your address, which I will say again, I do not share your address with anybody, not even the mods. I mean, there's been times Janet goes, um, I don't, I forgot CB's address. I'm like, you're going to have to call C, you're going to have to get with CB. No, she, I'm just using her as an example, both of them. She's never, she's never asked me for CB's address. Um, but <laughs> I don't give out anybody's addresses. So if you give me your address, I don't put you on an email list. I just send you your stuff on the way. Okay. All right. So that being said, I'm going to, here's going to be number one. And this will be number two. Okay. So this will be one and two. So this will be the first one. First person and the second person. So when I type in go, whatever number random.org comes up with, the first person closest 
and the second person closest. Do y'all have any questions? Ask them. Now. Yes, it is for U.S. and international. But again, there's, I mean, I don't even think, I don't even know if Australia's taken any mail. I'm not, and I'm not joking. There's, I think there's places in Australia that's not even taking shipping in. So I'm going to ship it. I'm going to mail it. But if you don't get it, then sorry. That's all I can say because they're going out. All right. I'm going to take them to the post office tomorrow. So, and I'll, I'll have her, you know, put the little papers, you know, the amount on there. So, but if you don't get it, don't complain because that I'm, you're going to have to blame the post office. All right. So here we go. When I type in go one number only between one and 100. Okay. And I'm only going to give y'all like 10, I'm going to give y'all about 30 seconds to put in a number. Well, when the numbers stop. But don't dilly-dally dawdle, okay? All right, there you go. Go. One number only between 1 and 100, okay? There we go. So I'll wait till it, because it'll fly up in just a minute. It always does that, because it kind of free. There it goes. All right, everybody put in a number between 1 and 100. And if you're lurking, come on in. Come on in and try to, if you want stamps. You may not want some acrylic stamps. Okay, <laughs> I'm just saying. All right, put your number in. I'm going to count down. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one. Get them in. Do I have cap locks on there? I can't even see it. There we go. All right. And stop. All right. Here we go. Let's see what we get. First two people closest to 58 without going over. 58. That's the number. 58. The first two people closest to 58. Okay. So let's all go back and look. Let's see. Without going over. Okay. So Judy said New Zealand and some parts of Australia are not getting mail. Yeah. Okay. I see a 54. Okay. So Brenda D has a 54 and somebody else had a, and S McKinney had 54. Okay, there's a 59 that goes over. I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm scrolling. So it looks like those two. All right, so the first person that had 54 was, where is it? Brenda, Brenda D. Brenda D was the first person with 54. And the second person that had 54 was S. McKinney. So is that right? Everybody check on me. Those look like the two people that that came in. Hi, Bacola, you're just in time to help. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, and here's my email, guys. You have to email me your address. If you wanted to go out tomorrow, email me today. Email me right now. Here's my email. <laughs> and even if I have your address, send it to me again. So it makes it easier for me. There's my email. Okay, so here we go. We're going to do some more. So Brenda D gets this one. S. McKinney, you get this one. All right, so let's stack that. We're going to, I'm only doing two at a time because it just makes it easier, guys. I could do 10 at a time, but then we're all scrambling trying to see who was first. Okay, so the next two are, here is this Hello Sunshine and these little frame things. And here's an alphabet. Okay. It's hard to see because these have not been stamped. They're brand new. Never been. These have never been stamped. So this is an alphabet here and some um, some uh, thinking of you frames. Okay. No, 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 no. Don't put your address in here. <laughs> don't put your address in here. Well, you didn't put the whole thing, but don't don't put your address in here. And you didn't win anyway, so. <laughs> Only if you win, send me your address. And then these little flower stamps. 
If the moms ever see anybody put the, somebody's ad, your address in here, just delete it. Just delete it, okay? Because we some people get confused. You don't you do not want to put your address in here in the live chat. Okay. All right. So here we go. We're going to do it again. So, let's see. It'll be person number 1 and person number 2. All right. Here we go. Wait, wait till I type in go. When I type in go, put it a number. Same rules. One number only between 1 and 100. Okay. Yeah, you can't go over. You cannot go over. If everybody had 25 and the number was 60 and you put in 61, the people that I put in 25 is going to win. You can't go over. That's my rule. That's just the way it's easiest for me to do it that way. Okay. Without going over. First person closest without going over. Okay. Put them in there quick because we're going to count down. We're going to count down. Don't dilly dally doddle. I, I have a whole bunch of. <laughs> Or synonyms, but I, I don't have them right here. Okay. Ready? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay. There we go. Let's pick a new number. All right, so the last person, I mean, the last number was 58. Without going over, people, it's without going over. All right, generate a new number. 84. The first two people closest to 84 without going over. Okay, 84. 84 is the number. Okay. Let's scroll back. Okay, Devin, Devin has 80. I see Devin has 80. Sharon Lombard has 78. Is there anybody in the 80s beside Devin? Okay, it looks like Devin, Devin got the first one. Y'all double check me, but I think it's Devin Rex. And... Who did I say was the second one? Sharon Lombard. Am I right? If I'm wrong, I'll change it. Is that correct? Okay. I'm, all right. Pacola confirmed. Okay. So, Devin, you're going to get these um, frames, borders, and sentiments. And Sharon Lombard, you're going to get the alphabet. Okay. There we go. All right. Okay. So let's do, let's see. That's four. Let's, let's just, all right. We'll do, we'll do one more set. We'll do one more set. Okay. So here we go. So this set is flowers and bows and some feathers and some little borders. And this one is all sentiments. Okay. This one is all sentiments. All right. So we're going to do these two. Again, Send me your address, guys, so I can get these out to y'all tomorrow. I'll put them in the I'll put them in the mail and get them out to you tomorrow. Okay. And then I got one more thing here that I'm gonna do um, uh, after this. Okay. All right. So here we go. Don't wait till I type in go. Wait till I type in go. This will be number one, and this will be number two. The first person closest and second person closest. I think everybody's got it now. Don't put it. That's all right, Rachel. That one didn't count. I'm not going to count that one, Rachel. You can, if you want that number, put it. Now, wait, everybody. See, that's what happens when one person accidentally. Everybody stop. Everybody stop. Let's everybody stop. <laughs> Scott. Those two won't count. Wait till I type in go. That's okay. It happens. Just those don't count. Those. I know. It's okay. It's okay. So you have to put them in again. All right, here we go. Go. Okay. All right, there we go. So now go. <laughs> it does happen. It does happen. All right. 
And then um, I know Julie's not here and Tina's not here uh, and Janet won't want them. But afterward, um, after in a minute, I'm going to send one to Tina, one to Julie. And, and I'm going to let because because Pacola is here, I'm going to let her pick. So, um, yeah, I got a couple I got a couple stamp here for my mods. Janet has every stamp I have, I'm sure, or close to it. So I'm not going to send her one. She's still waiting on her box from a week and a half ago. But anyway, that's beside the point. OK, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. Three, two, one. Okay, so let's pick another number. Hang on. Or it's, it's one number, but two people win. All right, so the last one was 84. We're going to generate a new number. 52. 52. The first two people closest to 52. 52. I'm going to let y'all do this one. I did the last two. <laughs> Hi, Mary. I'll let y'all do it. Okay. So, um, yeah. The, la the, ne the two people closest to 52. All right. can, I, can I trust somebody to put that in for me? I'll wait. Fernando is one. I need the numbers. Okay. Miss Susie. Miss Susie. It's Miss Susie, I think. Miss Susie and Fernando. Oh, wait. Who? Wait. Fernando. Which one was first? Fernando. Okay. So that's number two. So Fernando. Let's switch, switch them around so I do them correctly. Fernando was the first person. Okay, so Fernando was number one. Miss Susie was number two. Okay, there we go. Pacola got it. All right, so Fernando and Miss Susie. There y'all go. So y'all going to get those. Again, Fernando's in Brazil. We are going to say a prayer that this makes it. <laughs> okay? All right, then Pacola. Pacola, which would you like? Do you want the flowers or the birds? You pick. Pacola. Pacola, Miss Pacola. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, Pacola, do you want the flowers or the birds? Yes. And email me. Please email me your addresses today so I can send them out tomorrow. I'm going to put them in an envelope and send them out to y'all tomorrow. Okay. So, Pacola, do you want the flowers or the birds? You get to pick because you're here. And then I'm going to give one to Tina. And then I have another set over here for Julie. So which one do you want? So I'm rewarding my mods. Okay, the birds. Okay, so Pacola wants the birds. Tina's going to get the flowers. I got another one over here for Julie. So we're going to get all those out. Okay, there we go. There we go. I want to keep this. That's my sample for the acrylic paint. I'll keep that up under here. All right, so we're going to send all these out. To, I'll get them in envelopes, send these out tomorrow. Uh, as long as you send me your address. Don't, don't forget, guys, because, you know. All right, so now let's finish going through a few more stamps, stamping out a couple things maybe. I wanted to stamp out the new ones, but I don't know. Y'all can kind of see them. These are my new ones. Again, this is a type. Let's go this way. This is looking down at a typewriter. And then here is a dissection of an alarm clock. These are, I don't know if they're new. They're new to me. Uh, I think this one's been out a, a while. The Stampers Anonymous, Tim Tim Holtz, Pat, these uh, background stamps. Uh, I'm not sure about this one either. And this one either. But I ordered this one right here because of Colleen and Kathy Berg. 
<laughs> so um, yeah, I got a few other ones. All right, so let's see what's in my tub. Uh oh, there's my heat gun. Let's turn the heat gun off and move it out of the way. <laughs> so this this stack here, I mean this pile here, making room is a little hodgepodge as well. This is going to be another one of those that's going to drive Janet crazy, but it's one of my dig through ones. <laughs> and thanks everybody. And thanks mods for uh, helping. Um, this was a lid off of a Prima uh, or a Maya road floral thing, but it's good for sitting stamps in. There's a little world, some little cling stamps. These are just some random little um, stamps and hand-carved ones. Here's another piece of that foam. See? This is awesome stuff. If you can find this. Okay, here's another, I don't know. Here's another hand-carved one. What did I what did I carve here? Oh, I carved a pansy. And um, here's my um, oops. Here's my um uh oh. Oh, I forget his name. Anyway, my tea bag. I have coffee and tea. Here's one of my hand carved. This is on the, uh, what do you call it? You know, violin thing. I'll stamp that out for you. Let's see. There's some little, I'm just trying to keep these little teeny ones in here. I'll, I'll stamp out a few of my hand carved ones. There's a cat. See, this has got glue on it. I don't know what. There's a cat. That's one I haven't carved yet, but I have it on a piece of that rubber. Here's, there, there's a set of these somewhere. Oh, here it is. They, I've tumped them over somehow. I've tumped this, this set. Oh, there's, I stamped that out earlier. That alphabet one. They're probably, here's another piece of that foamy stuff. I'll, I'll do another something for y'all with that, show you. Again, some more backgrounds and, um, patterns same for this this they're just some on acrylic acrylic pieces that are giant uh, pattern oh here's another one of those prima ones let's put that in here here's one of the prima ones <laughs> oh, I, oh i guess i could do my tea bag i i cut i made a cut there so i have to fill that in but i'll, I'll stamp that out uh, here's another one. See, I have these ready to carve. So here's uh, one of my light, my uh, light bulbs I carved. Uh, let's put these, let's put this under here. Here's another, just a pattern. Here's my gargoyle. Um, I carved out a gargoyle. What else is in here? Here's another little gargoyle carved. Uh, so just different little patterns and leaves. Oh, there's a pea pod. I'll, I'll stamp out some of my hand carved ones. How about that? That's, those are good. Let's see. Some paisleys. I'm trying to kind of keep those little ones in here. Uh, what is this one? I think that's a, oh, it's a cupcake. It's my cupcake. Here's a little cat card. Here's a little postage stamp. Let's see, there's some glue in here. Somehow some glue leaked in here because it's on my little postage stamp here, Janet. <laughs> All right, so let's see. I'm going to throw this away if I can't get it the glue off. All right, that's a piece of glue. So I don't know what happened. There's another frame. This is just the plastic. What else do I have hand carved in here? There's my initials. Um, there's a little dove. Oh, here's a little uh, moon. What else is in here? There's a uh, gear. Got all kinds of carved stuff in here. Oh, and my moon pie. That Lisa. Y'all make sure and keep Lisa in y'all's prayers. She this is the the her as far as I know, she only carved this one stamp. She carved it for me. Lisa Scott, I will uh we'll stamp that. Okay, so all right, so we just got all kinds of stuff in here. 
It's like, you know, didn't y'all, when y'all were a kid, have a box like this? Well, not necessarily with stamps, but have like a junk box where you just had all kinds of just stuff in it that you could rummage through and use for different things? Well, if you didn't, then you're missing out. All right, that needs to go in here. This can go in here. All that can go in there. All right, so let me move this to the floor. Let me find a piece of paper up under here somewhere. All right, so we'll carve out. I mean, we'll carve out. We can carve another day. We'll stamp out some of my hand-carved stamps. Okay, and again, this is just a foam. This is actual made for stamping, but you can also just use that kid's foam you get at Michael's or Hobby Lobby. Yeah. All right, and then before we go, we're going to read out of our 1,001 Ways to Be Creative. So I hope... I hope y'all got lots of ideas today, plus getting to see my um, haul from, uh-oh, this this got away, Janet. <laughs> that goes on there. Okay, that goes in my bowl. Um, y'all uh, got some inspiration and ideas. I can say, honestly, I've never had a box like that. My mother did, explains a <laughs> Okay. All right, so let's go ahead. Oh, and here's my light. Let me go ahead and just... Uh, I don't have, I, I should get, let me get an acrylic block. Look at my acrylic block, Janet. <laughs> With double-sided tape and glue. <laughs> Janet, I know, wants to send a cleaning team over to my house. My house is really clean. It's just that my art stuff is a little, is a little, uh, See, I need to use this on my, this I, This is what I need to put, this this on my, uh, the stamp sets I send you guys out with the Society of Idea Collector light bulb. <laughs> so I'll put this on y'all's envelopes, because that's just Society Idea Collector. I'm setting that aside. Okay, let's uh, see what else I got here. This is my cup. And also, guys, these look really cool. If you stamp them in colors, let me zoom in one. I'm only stamping them in black ink right now, but if you are new to stamping, that's why we all have different ink stamp colors because it looks so cool in colors, right? But I'm just going to stamp them in black for you now just so you can see some of my uh, hand cards. So there's my cupcake. And you can also, if you if you stamp them in waterproof ink, like stays on, then you can color these, right? Once the ink is dry, once the ink is dry. All right, so there's that. Let's check on this gear here. This one's got, I think, got some uh, glue on it, too. It needs a couple of, sometimes you got to stamp it a couple times to get a nice print. So there's one of my gears. Let me do my Lisa Moon Pie. So Lisa made this, it was her first stamp she ever carved, and she carved me out a Moon Pie. Look, see the moon? <laughs> I love my moon pie. Oh, please stamp in coconut cream. Yeah, not, I already put those away, Nat. Yeah, I put them away, so I'm not going to do it right now. Okay, so let me get, this one's got a little bit of glue or something on. Let me get, uh, let me get some baby wipes here. And that's a good way to clean your stamps kind of quickly, too, is with, um, with uh, a baby wipe. But I got a little bit of glue on there some from something. All right, so this one is just says post, I think. Yeah, it's just DLW, my initials post. But if you have a baby wipe handy, you can just stamp it off on a baby wipe. And it won't clean them completely, but you'll, you'll get them pretty clean. Okay, so all these that I've used, I'm just going to go ahead and stamp them off. I'm just going to stamp them off on a baby wipe. Okay. I'm going to have to get another get more baby wipes, but <laughs> see. Or you can just stamp them off on, on the paper, too. My moon pie. So I'm just kind of clean them off like this. All right. So what else do I have? Oh, here's my initials. Another initials. My, oh, I didn't get the whole thing. But magic rubs are the best for carving. 
If you just want a, uh, something inexpensive to buy, get the Magic Rub erasers for carving. Uh, let's see. That's just a moon. What else do I? Oh, here. Let's do the. Um, hi, Kim. Anybody else I missed? And see, it needs to be stamped again to be dark. Sometimes you got to stamp them twice because the first ink doesn't, it kind of, I don't want to say it soaks in, but it coats it. And these bigger ones, you know, you want to take a little time to get the pressure on them. See, if I do a third one, it'll even be darker. <clears throat> okay, so let me just kind of stamp that off with my baby wipe. Let me get some more baby wipes so Janet doesn't freak. <laughs> I tease Janet. She knows I'm teasing her, guys. And she teases me, too. So, so it goes, the teasing goes both ways. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. A Stradivarius tentacle. <laughs> yeah. All right. So let's just turn this over. Let's do, and I, this is one I did um, carve specifically for uh, Society of Idea Collectors, this one here. So I carved that one out for Society of Idea Collectors. Okay. Then my tea. I don't know what my coffee. I did a coffee and a tea, but I don't know what my coffee. Now the tea one, um, I, I cut into it right there. So anytime I use this one, anytime I use my tea, I have to go in here and, and correct it because I cut the edge off, but I did, I carved a tea bag. Let's see. This is a little cat. This is a little cat. Um, oh, here's my pea pod. This is one of my favorites. I love my pea pod. And again, like if you stamp this in green, it's really cool. There's my carved pea pod. <laughs> Rachel. <laughs> and you know, then I could also add, you know, some little viney things, you know. <laughs> All right, so let me let me clean well, let me just stamp it. It's easier this way. Okay. And what else do I have here? Oh, I have a rat. Here's my rat. This is one. I used this one for years. I used this one for years for the rabbit trail. Rabbit trail. <laughs> I used this one. For, some of y'all have got this one back from, you know, I don't know how many years ago. And, oh, I want to show you this. Let me just do, I won't do the big gargoyle, but you, you can kind of see it there. But let me do the small one here because I'm running out of space here. So here's my small gargoyle. Love friends who get my kind of crazy. <laughs> and so there's my little gargoyle. And let's clean that off. Okay, so now I showed you all this on that, um, using it on the, that, that worked out really well, that keychain. I think I'll just use that one again because if y'all missed it. And then we're going to read out of our 1,001 Ways to Be Creative, and then we're going to go. So I can go uh, cook the rest of my food. Oh, I need to go put that in the oven. Do y'all want to wait? For, can y'all wait two minutes? I'll be right back. I got to go. No, I'm not going to have time. It's not going to. Yeah, I will. Okay. Hang on, guys. I'm going to be right back. Give me, give me two minutes. Give me two minutes. Maybe three.
to finish up my the rest of my lunch before so hubster has something to eat in about 20 minutes so i'm sure y'all didn't mind okay <laughs> so i want to show you how this I might, let me get another piece of something to stamp on here uh, i know i got some more scrap paper under here I don't want something that big. Here we go. Okay. All right. So, this stuff right here, when you heat it up, so you can, and you could reuse it. So, if you're done stamping, oh, thanks, little sister Cheryl. So, I'm going to, you can reuse it. So, it's already got a pattern on it, but I'm going to reheat it. Hang on, let me get something to hold it with because I want to reheat the whole thing and my hand's in the way. Okay, then you take it and you smash it onto, you smash on anything that you want to get that imprint of. I'm doing it on the zipper and this um, pull. Okay, so I just did it on that. Let's do it a little better. I mean, more ink. Well, it needs more ink, but you get the idea, I think. I think. <laughs> let me let me ink it this way. So, isn't that cool, though? And it works with anything. You can just use a pile of buttons. You can use just anything. All right, so let's see. Let me stamp this off and clean it off a little. Maybe I'll let's see what else could I well I don't want to have I don't want to take the time because we want to read out of our book. But I wanted to show you. So if you ever can find this stuff anymore. Yeah, I know, right? Because if you can find this blue heat you just heat it up um i don't know what it's called i've had it for years and i bought it at a stamp convention years ago it was in a big baggie full of just chunks of this stuff different sizes just all chunky bits of this so okay all right so real quick now let's go ahead let me get my hands a little clean here so i can get our book and if y'all miss the beginning of the show we um you know, I showed some new art magazines and some of the papers and stuff that Hubster uh, brought me back from L.A. So go back and watch that if you missed it. Yeah, coins. It does. It works good. Mm. I don't know if I have a coin here, though. I have a coin. I have some paper clips. I don't think I, I don't know if I have a coin in here. Up here. Nah, but yeah, I've done paper clips and all kinds of things. Okay. So let's go ahead and read out of our thousand one ways to be creative. Then today's um, I've got to do today's Inktober and get those um, rubbers, those acrylic stamps mailed out to you guys. All right. So we are up to number 704. We've been reading out of this book for like two years. <laughs> so and we just read a couple pages every week. And uh, it's A Thousand One Ways to Be Creative, a little book of everyday inspiration, Barbara Ann Kipfer. And I know you can get this on Amazon. I bought mine at Tuesday morning before my Tuesday morning shut down. But um, all right, so let's, let's go ahead and read these. 704, pretend to be a secret agent for a day. 
sign up for a watercolor workshop. I should have a pointer. Remember that whenever your mind expands, it never shrinks back to its original dimensions. Dive in, dig deep. Draw an item from the inside out. And if something else occurs to you, I say this every week, if something else occurs to you when I'm reading these, make sure you write down what occurs to you so that you can run with that idea. Walk in one direction for as long as you can until a brilliant idea comes to you. Experiment with life as you do with art. Mix different ingredients and try new formulas. Decorate a juice can and use it to plant seeds. Does anybody have juice cans anymore? I don't even remember seeing them in the grocery store. Do they still have like orange juice, like frozen orange juice in cans? Does anybody know? Maybe <laughs> another country? I don't remember seeing a juice, like an orange juice can of frozen forever. Create a homemade musical instrument. So there we go. We'll put the, oh, here's, oh, here we go. I'm going to go ahead and read one more page. Make things with your hands. I'm going to read these. Just inspiration. Make things with your hands. An advent calendar, a bark rubbing with paper and crayons, a bird feeder, a box for viewing an eclipse, a catnip toy, a centerpiece for dinner, a ceramic cup or bowl, clever luggage tags. And remember, you can, even if you just draw these, hi, Lady Jan. Oh, you do have some frozen oranges in your refrigerator right now? Okay. I'm, I just haven't looked for it in so long that I, I just don't remember seeing it, Janet. Um, you could draw these things. You don't necessarily have to like actually go make a bird feeder. You could draw, draw one, paint one, sketch one, doodle one. Coasters. A collage from leftover grocery products. A cootie catcher. Do y'all remember those, those little paper cootie catchers that go like this? Y'all remember those? A crown of flowers. A day in the life video with your family. A do not disturb door hanger or a doorstop. A leaf stencil. A life-size replica of yourself. This, now I'm going to tell you, I have done this and it's fun. If you get that, you know, like the roll, the cheap paper, I have the, the craft color paper, shipping paper, but you can get rolls of the white, you know, like school teacher paper and roll it out in your driveway or sidewalk and have somebody trace your body and then go and fill it in with your own clothes, your face, but just get somebody to outline you, you know, just like you do your hand you know, but draw your whole body. It's really, so, it's fun to do. A list as long as your arm, a loaf of bread, a marionette, a maypole, a Mobius strip, paper flowers, party favors and place cards, a pinata, a pinwheel, a potholder or hot plate pad, a rain gauge, a recipe with only four ingredients, Relief maps, a scrapbook with words and images, sponge paintings, a sundial, a stained glass window made with tissue paper, a tire swing, a uni unique folders or folder tabs with pictures, wax pressings of leaves and flowers. Again, you could draw these or make up a story about them or use your imagination or recombine them. I mean, pick something like a catnip toy and a sundial. So make a sundial catnip toy, you know, or you could just draw a, draw a cat with a catnip toy and with the sun, that looks like a sundial. So recombine things. Okay, so that's where we are till next week. I hope y'all enjoyed that. And I got a big mess to clean up in here, but y'all are worth it. Y'all are worth it. <laughs> ah, Rachel. <laughs> okay, girl, that's got to go in the wing nut book. Where's a... <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> 
Just say it. Okay, so Rachel J. Fleming. No one traces my body, just saying. And so she's going to make the wing nut book today. If I can find it. Where's my wing nut book? I always put it on a different shelf that I never can find my wing nut book. Where are you? Oh, and I was also going to show some more of Janet's, uh, I mean, some of her, uh, let me see here. I'll pull one. I don't, what do I do with my wing nut book? Denise, did you take my wing nut book? No, she wouldn't have done that, but it's, I'm not seeing it right down my shelf. Okay, well, let's go into the wing nut book when I find the wing nut book. <laughs> All right, Rachel. All right, so let's look at one of Janet's, um, uh, let's look at one of Janet's uh, zines before we go. All right, let's move this out of the way. I must have moved it to a top shelf or something out of the way. I'll look for it. Okay, but you made the wing nut book, Rachel. <laughs> yeah. I'm serious. I'm looking at the shelf. Let me look one more time. I mean, because I keep it on one of these two shelves. Always. It's always on these two shelves. And it's not here right now. So did I put something in front of it and block it where I can't see it? Oh, there it is. That's exactly what happened. My, uh, my uh, zines were in front of it. Okay, so here we go. Wing that book. Wing nut book. Let's find a spot and right there. <laughs> and we call it the wing nut book because we're all a bunch of wing nuts. All right. So that will go back on the show. So, um, yeah, I've got a couple of Janet's little zines here. Does anybody want to see those real quick? <laughs> Let's zoom in. Okay. So here we go. This one is the Praying Mantis Coconut Telegraph, serving the community since 1908. A local student expel. <laughs> I know we read these before, but anyway, these are Janet's little zines, and she makes them into newspaper, like little news, mini newspapers. Paco, a student at the local grammar school, has been suspended for jumping on his bed during Zoom schooling. Miss. Miss Millie, the nutrition teacher, said multiple warnings had been given. She stated further that Paco will be the death of me, providing that the frog gang doesn't get her first. Beauty contest winner announced. The Poipu, po 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 Janet? The Poipu Beauty Contest Committee is proud to announce that Miss Penelope Man, Man, Mantodia has been awarded the crown. The judges said that the choice was clear. One stating that her double-spined double-spined murder clamps were beyond compare. You know, the, the her hands. <laughs> Penelope's mother, Precious, while sobbing with joy, exclaimed, I almost wish I hadn't eaten her father at conception. I know he would be so proud. <laughs> we were able to locate one of her 10,421 siblings. Paco interrupted his bed jumping long enough to display a gagging reflex when informed of his sister's crowning. Penelope will represent Poi Poo in neighboring communities, promoting her platform of eliminating frog gangs as well as world peace. Congratulations. <laughs> now, uh, this is another article in the newspaper. Teacher profile. This week, we profile Miss Millie, the nutrition teacher at our grammar school. Her emphasis is teaching our youngsters to avoid the sugar-laden aphids and opt for the high fiber and protein found in grasshoppers. Miss Millie is in her fifth month of her anticipated 12-month lifespan. <laughs> Wanted, dead or alive, $5,000 reward. Pello Bates, frog gang leader. <laughs> she drew all these guys and hand-lettered this hand-lettered it off. Red-eyed mantis sighted. 
A rare specimen of the elusive red-eyed mantis was seen at the local flea market. Warning to all male mantises, do not attempt to breed this mantis. <laughs> Help wanted. Babysitter. Contact Paco's mom. 1-800-BAD-KIDS. Teacher for the school year of 2022. Miss Millie's lifespan is expected to expire on 8-2021. <laughs> Beach cleanup must be willing to pick up liquefied jellyfish. 1-800-GROSS-OUT. Counselor, working with beach cleanup crews. 1-800-FIX-KIDS. Photographer, fixing the photos in the coconut telegraph. Just look. And here's picked fresh daily. 1-800-MY-BED. <laughs> you know, because the leaves, they sleep on a bed. Hands in the air like you just don't care. <laughs> uh, hi, Ruth. How you doing? <laughs> she does the most amazing. I mean, she does. This was one of her quotable quarterlies. I haven't seen you since that time. I hoped I'd never see you again. Be bold or italic. Never regular. These are all her uh, Zentangles in the background, too. I don't want to seem like I think I'm always right, but I am. And that's why it comes across that way. <laughs> Thou shalt not whine. Caution. Mood swing in progress. Oh, really? You know what that sounds like? Not my problem. <laughs> Janet, you're just so, you're so funny. And again, all these are Zentangles she's done in the background. I'm sorry I don't remember ordering a glass of your opinion. <laughs> I ate healthy and exercised today. I better freaking wake up skinny. <laughs> as long as everything is exactly the way I want, I'm totally flexible. So anyway, there's a couple of her zines. So, <laughs> all right, guys, I'm going to go. Hubster should be here any minute. And thanks for, uh, thanks for being here and see, watching my hauls and my books and my art and my stamps and hanging out, making the wing nut book uh, today, Rachel. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, y'all have a great week and weekend, and uh, we'll either see you at other streamers or we'll see you here back Monday. The good Lord willing and the creek don't rise. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs>